Welcome back to the Heroes International here in 2023. It is a Berlin showcasing some great matches, and we have some awesome matches coming your way. But first, got to introduce our co-caster. We got Bahamut in here once again. Welcome back, my man. Thank you for having me back for some more awesome Easy. Heroes of the Storm. I'm glad to be here, and I'm ready for tons of amazing action. We still have... Many, many more best of fives ahead we of got, us today. We got two best of fives left and a best of seven. So we still have matches and great hots action. Starting with South Korea as they take on the United States. Loser will be going home and the winner will be moving forward to face off against Sweden to see who will be facing off against Germany. So let's go ahead and check out this bracket right now. This is the story so far of the Heroes Cup that we've had. Germany, of course, 9-0. and oh, Hasn't Oof. dropped a single game. United States... Starting to warm up, which is something that they say that they excel at. Usually yeah. their first couple of games will be a bit on the rough side, but they figure out the map, they bring it all together, they do all the calculations, and now they're here against South Korea, who I would say has been quite hot and cold. Hot and cold is actually a very good way to break down South Korea. There's been some games where they start out so aggressive and the late game just mm -hmm. falls away from them. Almost, it just, it just falls away from their grasp. Last night we saw a... Barnhouse burner, if you will. Sure. South Korea just annihilated France last night in a 3-0 upset. That is, honest to God, not what I was expecting to see last night. That that matchup was kind of shocking that, that France got eliminated so very quickly. And uh, that means that South Korea will move on. And, of course, we also saw that United States did beat Poland in a 3-0 yep. as well. So we'll be starting out with United States versus South Korea in the second best of five of the day. Winner of this goes up against Sweden. South Korea, historically, through Heroes of the Storm, has always been kind of similar to actually what we're seeing with the United States and North America. Uh, they can start off really, really hot. They can hit a situation where they kind of mellow out. Uh, they've always been mechanically strong, but sometimes they got to figure out what the meta is, right? Whenever you have these clashes, you have NA versus the EU and Korea, and they all have different metas in one year usually starts to win, and then you combine mm -hmm. what you know and move forward. And that's why you see South Korea starting to bounce back. So this match, technically, historically, should be electric, with NA being fantastic, the defending champions from the last match that we had, and then South Korea ramping up. So we have a best of five in front of us. I can't wait to see what unfolds. We have additional bands already going through with Dahaka and now Lucio unavailable. A total of, I believe, eight characters yeah. unplayable, and that changes things up pretty crazy. And then we'll go to the Grand Finals. Don't forget, Murden will be banned because of your guys' support. And we have one more hero that can be banned out as well. If you continue to check out what is going on, use exclamation mark ban, get all the information, and see what's going on. So thank you so much for the support, and I hope you're enjoying the tournament. And as a note, that that last goal has to be hit before the best of seven yes. grand finals. It cannot be during. It's not like we'll get into map two and yeah. it's like, all right, that last band's gone. Bye-bye. We, we want to be fair to the players, <laughs> exactly. right? Like, they've been very accommodating, willing to adjust, and so make sure if we do it, we got to hit that goal before that best of seven does begin. So we have two matches to do it. But this one that is coming up in front of us, the draft is ready. And we're going to a map that I have yet to cast. I don't know if you've cast it in your matches. Tomb of the Spider Queen? I'm honestly not sure. Okay, well... <laughs> That's how it goes when you're casting all day. Tomb of Spider Queen, this will be the first time that I've seen it. Wave Clear, Wave Clear is the name of the game, but you also need core damage, because once you get to the four and the keeps, that core is easily defendable and actually quite hard to finish off with the Web Weavers. What I love about Tomb is it's one of those maps where it's either 12 or 24 minutes. There's no in-between. Sure, it's yeah. either super fast or super long. And we're Did you draw Sylvanas or not? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point as well. Uh, it's also a really great double soak map. You, you have some very interesting yeah. tactics that you can employ. There is something that that came through from Europe. It was a new meta that started to shift onto Miss Spider Queen, specifically from Europe, where you had players doing single bottom push in the bottom lane. So core four, bottom lane, kind of like Blackheart's Bay. Sure. And then you have Azul going double soak top mid. Yeah. So maybe we see someone break out this strategy on the map. It, it completely throws off the draft style as well. You can catch someone so off guard with this play style. We'll see if that will be employed or if it will be our standard top, mid, and then solo lane bottom, rotate to the uh, siege camp every so often. But this is also a good map for Asmodan, just saying. I mean, you're not correct. It's you're my not favorite wrong. map to play Asmodan, honestly. You're not wrong. The double soak is very helpful in that regard. Yeah, the myriad of strategies that is available on mm -hmm. Tomb Spider Queen has definitely evolved over the last few years of Heroes of the Storm being out. The strategy that you're talking about of pushing out the bottom lane yep. is so beneficial because if you are able to get pressure with catapults in that bottom lane, and a team has to go and defend it, you squeeze out just enough room to run to the top and grab the boss. And that's yeah. one of those win conditions that you're going for. Another common strategy that was largely 
Responsible for a lot of victories in 2018 was a double turn-in. You wait for about 100 coins to make sure that you have enough, and mm -hmm. then you go for the double turn-in around level 9, and you just blow open the game. So we'll see how that's going to unfold here. Our bands are Diablo and Malfurion. South Korea bans out Urel, and it seems like Urel is going to consistently be one of our number one bands and the first couple of matches. Well, against NA, it always makes sense. You don't give Liam Urel. That is, that is the tried and true saying <laughs> for a lot of these teams, and I do think South Korea has done their homework. I am very curious, though, what they're going to be leaning into for this last one. Will it be the Sylvanas ban? That is... Okay, I, I, I feel like United States, they gotta immediately jump on the Sylvanas for a map like Tomb of the Spider Queen. It's a solid pickup, but also mm -hmm. Tracer's left up and available, Ooh, which has been a mainstay for oh. the United States. It's gonna be Stukov coming in from Legacy. And uh, it's actually kind of funny that you mentioned the URL. We got it through last night for a second, and after the match, I was like, Liam, you, they gotta stop giving you URL. And he's like, I can't. He gave it to me. <laughs> what do you want from me? What do you want from me? I, I see you, Rel. I take it. <laughs> he just takes over the game. His rotations are on point, and that will always be a consistent thing with him. So be aware whenever you're watching the U.S., watch out for your Rel on Liam. So I did I did travel with NA from the event last night and back to the event this morning. I actually just we just ran into them we ran into each other in the lobby this morning and I overheard something. I, I'm I'm not gonna repeat anything they said, but I overheard something at one point where it was they were talking about draft and stuff and I heard something 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 Stukov and now I'm remembering they basically said, we take Stukov immediately. Sure. They want to take Stukov away from, I believe it was Hyde, is uh, what the conversation was. So I like this heads up. They're denying something that Hyde is really good on, but this Brandon does give that Sylvanas a new brack. Though the Tyrael from yesterday, Brandon's Tyrael from yesterday, we were talking about this on and, off, on and off stream. We wanted to see more aggression from Brandon, and the Tyrael was that aggression. I love this first pick. The start of the draft from United States is really good. Good control, good deny, and good mobility from, uh, well, from Tyrael Junkrat. I've been impressed with uh, Uninverted's Tyrael, as you just mentioned. His stitches as well was yes. great. He played well into the team. And then his Murden was actually quite strong, too. So with it being banned out in the uh, Grand Finals, we'll have to see how he continues to adjust his tank pull. Matara does bring in Junkrat, which will give you a hefty amount of wave clear, which is needed here for Tomb of the Spider Queen, but also great to watch out for flanks. This is a map because it's so short and condensed. There is a good chance that you can see someone coming in from above or on the bottom side, and having those traps available to check the bushes or even the grenades saves you a lot of headaches. He's a good, to, me, to use a league term, he's a good warder. Like yeah, using sure. using those the traps, the steel traps and concussion mines in the upper and lower portion, as you had mentioned, of that rotational area is just it's fantastic to get vision on the enemy. Chromie will be banned away. They're gonna save this later for Modera. I think that's what it is. They're like, all right, we're gonna ban out Chromie so that way they can't take it away from us. But there are things like Sergeant Hammer up and available, and she's yeah. fantastic for a map like this, especially with a new brack having the ability to have some CC control if anyone steps in. Sylvanas with Wailing Arrow or Mind Control just to lock someone in place if they do try and advance into the Sergeant Hammer. Yeah, as long as you have protection, you already have that with a new brack, and then you bolster it out with the support. Gosh, you could even play something that's not Orthodox, like a Morales, if you needed to, if you want to pick up Hammer. That will not be the case here, though, as Hyde picks up Uther and Leoric mm. fills out the fourth slot. Okay. A lot of chain CC stun from South Korea. Three stuns basically between Anubarak and Uther. Oh, yeah. The Orc with an Entomb. This is looking like a really, really fun draft from South Korea. I mean, this also makes Tyrael that type of style where you're jumping in and out of fights a lot harder to pull off. Exactly. Uh, because of CC train there, Tyrael, while he does have that high mobility and can be great at bolstering out his teammates, he does feature a very low health pool. So you got to be careful when you're running into these melee boys. Malfuel comes in for Liam. This is a staple of one of the characters. Like, before I knew about Liam's Urel, I knew about Liam's Malfuel. He mm. knows how to deliver. Yeah. Hanzo will also come in for the uh, final pickup for Kier. And if you were watching last night, this man hit a five-man arrow that deleted and stopped the game Pew. from continuing against Poland. So you need to watch out for that. Hanzo also will be offering up fantastic wave clear at level four. He'll have the explosive arrow. And Maev rounds out the draft for South Korea. I... I really like both drafts. There's fantastic control from United States. South Korea's got good aggression. Also control as well with the Maya Umbro bind. Where are you leaning for these drafts, Trick? I like them both, actually. I feel like they're kind of equal going into the mm -hmm. match. Mm -hmm. Mostly because we got to witness. Uh, we stopped having when United States began this entire tournament. They were a little bit more aggressive looking for fights. And then Cure started switching up his shot calling, and it became more of a macro outstretch your opponent and play off of Liam, right? Mm -hmm. And that is bolstered out by this draft here. On the other side... We want the high mechanics coming from South Korea. It's what they've always excelled at. They're so good at being able to get into an aggressive fight and stance and pull out the W here. And this composition, playing off of Maev, really pays off for them. So here, it's all about who can get those first couple of kills and blow the map open. 
blowing the map open, also getting good Tomb of the Spider Queen, well, Web Weaver descents. You sure. don't want the Web Weavers to push up to the wave, get cleared out, and you get a gate. That's just, that's just very depressing. You but as you mentioned, the, as you were mentioning, though, the idea of the back to back turn in, those are really when you amplify that siege. You get the first turn in, whittle down structures, maybe gates a little bit, and yep. then you get that secondary turn where you're doing the actual structural damage, dealing some, some really. You're, you're pushing it and opening up the map. And that's what I'm expecting from these teams as we're going to get into Tomb of the Spider Queen, map number one. And on the left hand side, we've got the United States. We've got Liam on the Malthiel, Legacy to play Stukov, Huron Hanzo, Unaverted on the Tyriel. Last but not least, Madara will be throwing some trash around on Junkrat. Expecting a great series between these two teams in the far right in the red South Korea. Lockdown on Maiev, Crow played in Sylvanas, Hide on Uther, KC Beef on a new Burak, and Leoric being played by Kiri. Okay, Tuma Spider Queen, we're gonna start out here. Looking at the level ones, we will start with the yes. Nerubian armor for this Anubarak. Like it a lot. Spell armor increased to, I believe, 60% for him when he taps the W. Less burst ability on him. I, I just like a safer, safer play for KCB. For me, I'll be watching Maiev versus Tyrion and oh, how whoa. that matchup unfolds. Bonds of Justice at one for Maiev. Not, it's not a crazy talent, but we just have not seen it for this tournament. It's been a lot of Naishi's memento for camp clearing. Damage. Yeah. South Korea has always enjoyed damage. Talent. That's a good point. With it, they'll go that route and locked out as someone that is going to hit Tether, so mm -hmm. why not build into it? But yeah, it is a little bit on the rare side to see that one for sure. Also to note, we have target practice on Cure as well. Going to be able to pick up a little extra range, 30% range after hitting every enemy hero once and 100 extra damage. After completing the quest as Madara gets dove onto, can he get away? Absolutely not even threatened. Unaverted was there to help out. Lockdown rotating from the bottom lane. Slightly late had he been there on top of the Uther Stone that could have been a dead Junkrat. But you see the aggression already. That's the game plan here for South Korea. South Korea, when they are humming on all fours, they are well, all fives, they are good to go. And they will try to run you down. It's all going to come down to the scouting and the scouting arrows from Hanzo, the sonic arrows, keeping an eye on where Maiev is, is going to be key. I do notice a lot with South Korea as the games have gone on throughout this tournament, it's been a lot of gas, gas, gas. They, they the, the foot goes down on the pedal and they try not to let up on it. And sometimes it works out for them. Example against France. And just sometimes it's just it, it just gets crumbled away and they don't have enough momentum to push through the enemy. We'll see if that's gonna be the case here. Both teams doing easy rotations, grabbing their gems, a little bit of poke back and forth, but this is the start of Tomb of the Spider Queen. Hazwabs was saying that it's a game that gets going fast. This is actually one of the maps, in my opinion, that starts a little slow, and things don't really start kicking off until around level four, level six area, because that's where we're looking at first turn-ins. I mean, it's one of the best ways to stop South Korea from getting victories in a best of five series. If you have them consistently try and gank you, you could actually see it in their body language if they don't get a couple of kills. They mm. start to feel like they're missing or they're failing on yeah, the opportunities, yeah. and then suddenly the communication starts to go down. You could actually watch a team kind of deflate. So that's actually a great strategy for the United States to do here. Just keep an eye on the opposing team and not allow for any kills. Constantly keep retreating, and you can get to a point where someone will get a little overextended or slightly away from the support, and that's when you turn around and capitalize. KCB coming in for the knockup, playing the night camp perfectly here. They cleared it out in the mid lane. Oh, but Liam's coming in and showing off that mouthfeel. Locked out, able to tether away, pull him away from a new break, and then eat away. Smoothly done there. I actually, I, I was, I thought it was the low blow. I was watching the health bars. Uh, Drop down so very quickly, but reactive ballista spores at level one for Stukov. Legacy and crew are turning in 40 out of the 50 currently, or at least a good chunk of them. Hanzo still chilling in bottom, does have that explosive arrow from level four. That's a concussion mine on a KCB. There's a slow Silence. as well from Stukov, and the damage over time is not enough because Uther Hyde has the heal. Octum comes in, gets a tether on Legacy, was hoping for Hyde to come in and get a stun, but there's just too many health bars here. They decide to disengage, and we've actually had a lot of openings so far here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but no kills yet. Zero to zero, and the experience is neck and neck. Six to six. The other thing to note, too, Paralyzing Rage again for that Leor, going to up his slow to 60% with the Skeletal Swing. Nice way to slow people down, allow Sylvanas to have the sustained damage burning down maybe Madara, because Madara keeps getting away with a little bit of HP, and that's got to be very frustrating to South Korea. I mean, that's Junkrat in a nutshell, right? True, true. He's an annoying character to play against, always throwing nades at you, can throw down custom mine, get on the retreat, uh, and even having traps and bushes that you constantly walk from. Lockdown, going in for a turn and cure with the... <laughs> the eagle eye there lands a sonic arrow right on top of him. 
two out of the five stacks are done for Cure as well. Once he get that fifth, once he gets the fifth stack, as I mentioned, that hundred extra damage. Gonna go into the Dragon Hunger is at level seven. More spell power, more damage, more explosiveness. Forty-two for the side of North America turned in. Only eight more necessary for the first turn in. KCB avoiding a little bit of poke from Cure as Crow might be picked off. Nah, it's Sylvana. She's got a haunting wave. She's out of there. Able to retreat. Now, what I'm curious about is which team is going to first to turn in first. Uh, as mentioned, in Europe, usually you want to try and be around level 9, 9.5 before you get that turn in because you want to hit the 10 window and have that small window to open up. Maybe you can get a team fight and then get more afterwards. The United States has been dropping off their gems, but they have slowed down here at 42 and are starting to stack up. And having gems dropped in and being good to go and reared up the get a full turn in after you find a kill is always a solid strategy. It's more of just what will you do immediately afterwards with that. And we see them actually dropping down a total of, what, 16 here? which will bring them up uh, to 49, excuse me, 17 as they get to 49. And the Red Weavers are actually being dropped off as there was a sneak in, in the bottom lane. Nice sneaky turn in from Sylvanas. First, Web Weavers will descend for South Korea. Web Weavers naturally lose health over time as they're in the lanes, a little different from Garden of Terror. Also, Web Weavers descend as far up as they possibly can in the lane. Doesn't matter where your wave is, they'll descend as close as the enemy minion wave or the closest structure. So mid lane, top lane, descending fairly far in. This is going to be a good spawn for the side of South Korea. All right, we'll see how it goes down. Lockdown will be the main key to watch as he can actually hit those towers with his tether and it will convert over to a hero as you just saw there from Legacy, but Legacy and Unaverted were ready for it and were able to Eldrin's away. Cure happened to use a jump to get away from KCB, but KCB gets the Burrow Charge, gets the Impale. Cure trying to get out, but he's surrounded by four, and first blood goes to South Korea. Nicely done. Forces the natural agility in a bad spot, and Cure will be taken down. The siege continues through top lane with the Web Weaver very healthy. Oh, it's a little bit below 50%, but with the amount of allies around. This is great siege for the side of South Korea, and they'll be hitting tents first off this as well. I mean, opening the gates gives you those towers with just a slight amount of experience. I think each tower is worth two minions, right? So you get those all stacked up, and you can get that moving towards the 10, and that slight lead, as you mentioned, gives them the 10. Arrow turning off this fort. I'm watching Lockdown, man. Will he try to turn this around? United States steps up while they still have even talent tiers, and they hold the fort, but it is pretty bruised. Bruised up, battered, but it's still standing. With the turn-ins available, the clutch is now open. North America, United States only needs one gem for the time being, 31 in their pockets. On the side of South Korea, 49, they're rapidly approaching a back-to-back turn-in possibility. But those 10 talent tiers are here, and we got that sanctification for the Tyrael, hoping to save some allies with that one. Maybe Cure can be saved with that. But of course, an answer to that might be the containment disc from Maev that was just picked up. Yep, that has been showcased multiple times in this tournament. Kier using it to great effect against Deathwing, actually, mm -hmm. last night in that series. Well, always grabbing the tank and being able to push past it is a strong play, because then you can come backwards and uh, make sure after the duration ends to focus the target that you have hit. Uninverted doing a good job, though, keeping an eye on this front line. Leoric finally took his pressure on the bottom right with Malfiel stepping up. But with the KCB showing up in the location, I don't know if we're going to get this full fight here. A little bit of poke back and forth. I was staring at the, the waiting contest between Liam and Hyde. Who's going to take their 10 talent first? Liam did take his last rights. Hyde's still waiting, though. Could we see a Divine Storm? I feel like you want to go Divine Shield, stop any last rights potential. But who knows? Oh, no, it is definitely that Divine Shield. All right, 11 apiece, one kill to the side of South Korea. Stun into the face of Brandon. He may be taken out right here after this containment disc. Hyde goes with the stun. There's a hammer. There's a the knockup. Unaverted low. Sneaking Whoa. out low HP. Sanification. He's going to survive for now. Everyone from South Korea trying to converge, and there will be the final shot from South Korea as they find a second kill of the game. That was a few seconds off the death timer. Hanzo. This trait. The Hanzo does come out of that cocoon. Burrow charge from KCB, and Cure will fall. A double kill for South Korea. Two pickups, and guess what? The turn in from the uh, blue team here, the United States, is starting to converge. But with 15 seconds till Hanzo pops up, this gives South Korea some wiggle room to push out their waves and set up for a defense, doing their best here to stop the gates and forts falling. With losing these members, I wouldn't say back to back, but losing a couple of members here with the Web Weaver phase, feels a little defensive. It's going to be cleared out. I don't know how much value United States is going to find. Liam will push up the bottom lane. The rest of United States will focus on the top. 
Trick, why don't we focus on top lane and Tomb of Spider? Oh, never mind. I'm going to hold that point. Boss! I'll give you that quick answer, Thank but you. yes, you're right. There is a huge engagement. Yes, the top lane boss is a way... Oh, hang on. Big Arrow comes in and will land on three. Hyde able to get that cleanse off. Still has a Divine Shield if he needs to. This Web Weaver being focused down before it gets to the Ford. But Crow taking uh -oh. some massive poke here. At last rides into uh -huh. a Divine Shield. Will deny that. Tether comes in from Lockdown. And Liam oh. loses 27 gems. Was that the number 27 That's here? That's a lot of money down there. That is. It's like not going to a Tahoe casino, you're just losing. <laughs> not too good for him, unfortunate, as Lockdown was able to get that kill, and that's going to put United States slightly back on their next turn in here. South Korea has got to be a fan of that one, as they have four kills to zero. Unverted comes in to help out with the wave clear, and KCB will help up the knockout, but it was all a diversion, so Liork can drop off. Oh, but Kira gets the de de deny here. One more poke. There's a, ni a nice Sonic arrow. Eight stacks on the Bonds of Justice for the Maiev. We have four for the for Kira as well. Almost done with his target practice for that extra 100 damage. But the big thing, 13 talent here, parity has been found. We will have that talent here or that level advantage, so scaling advantage to South Korea a little bit. But I don't think that's going to hinder NA from trying to make some plays happen here. Though I got to say, the Naru the the Anubarak Carapace build is so annoying to deal with right now because he's, he's just, KCB is so hard to kill. United States has got to find a new target to really blow up, and it, who? They try and get Crow, too much mobility. They try and get Hyde, Divine Shield. They try and get KCB, he just pops W, walks away. Maya, Vault of the Warden. I just, South Korea has built such a beautiful draft for this game. Smooth play there by Liam. Actually got caught by the end too, but because he had a uh, proc on the mini wave, he's able to get out of there. Skate free, actually. Which means the Entomb will be down for another 25 seconds. But now it's time to deal with the Wrath Weavers that are knocking on the door of the front line. Top lane should be going down. It's left uncontested that Web Weaver will get that. Lockdown moves forward, gets Containment Disc on Stukov, but not really a major opportunity to go for a kill. Buy some time, and that four takes about, what, a little, little over halfway on the damage. Top four did get picked up, and South Korea is starting to pull away with experience here. Big. It's big for them. They're going to hit 16 talent tier first, and that's just going to force the United States to have to turtle up more. Cure does clear out the top lane, a very healthy web weaver. United States has got to make some big plays within the next level. Otherwise, they're, as I said, going to be turtle up, and they're going to be having to deal with web weavers. I'm looking at this right now. 63 out of the 60 necessary are in the pockets of South Korea. As a stun goes into the face of Madara, but he's got a concussion mind to say, nah, I'm out of here. Man, Hyde is here with every single stun, but it's kind of interesting. Like, Hyde's Uther is good, but it's interesting because he, he plays like Lucio. I, I know it's banned out, or even the Stukov that we've had picked up in the past. Yep. And he's able to make so much, much more of an impact. I, man, I wonder if it'll get a little bit better for him at 16 because he gets that benediction. I feel like it's just going to get more and more scary for the uh, United States. South Korea is just scaling super hard in this game. Containment Disc lands on Sank. Sanctification, and that allows Kier to get the natural agility away. Arrow. Pops the arrow, will land onto Uther. That's it. Still a lot of heroics being burned there, too. And Containment Disc will be up in 25 seconds. It's a short one. Finally taken by South Korea. They're just making efficient trades, right? Exactly, exactly. Like, they're setting up kills, looking terrifying, asking the United States to respond back in kind in their own heroics, and then just back away, right? And then you come back with the next Containment Disc and try to force a fight then. It's 60 seconds before we have the next invocation, and in eight seconds, Maiev can pick one more target and go for it. Camp to be cleared out through mid. Leoric will push up the wave in bottom. Gonna get that last fort down, so every lane does have periodic catapult pressure up against the United States. KCB coming in with a little CC. Lockdown, looking for the Emerald Bind. Not gonna be able to find anything. Drops a fan of knives and walks away. But as I mentioned, that 16 talent tier is here. Uh, the the Holy Ground doesn't have... The, I, I think it was just to get out. Brandon just didn't want to be in that bush anymore. Uh, he was actually setting up a denial of lockdown moving forward, so Malfoy can clear up the top wave. Uh, I see, I see. Thank middle. you, thank you. A small little play there from Uninverted, and just helping out a teammate, right? Yeah. All things like that. Uh, here comes a Riptire, helping out with the middle of the Web Weaver, but still, these are heroics that are just being burned. Like, South Korea right now is doing such a good job of making big, massive utility plays get utilized. Arrow comes out across, and immediately... Her own unstoppable comes out from Sylvana. She's able to E away. Another haunting wave. She's out. All right. So North America, they got to They got to They got to slow down. They got to breathe. I feel like there's a lot of panic ideas or a panic responses to things. A big wave in mid. Let's rip tired. There's there's. Oh, I, I I got an arrow, but there's no one around to play off the arrow. Now here on the north side of our screen in mid lane, there's lockdown. Here got so hit very though. Low. Here does go down. I was so focused on lockdown. I thought they had a kill, but no. It's Korea who finds the kill. Fifth of the game for 
South Korea. Wow. They're just, running away with it. They're just stretching their aggression great, right? Like, yeah. They're getting to a point where Maev is looking so terrifying that all the focus is on her. But actually, the real fear has been a Nubarak and Leoric. They both have isolation tactics between the Entomb, between a Cocoon from a Nubarak. They're the ones that are actually setting up these small, light kills, or even just a pure knockback uh, impale into a Burrow Charge. Uh, from a Nubrek has been enough. Great job by South Korea. They're, uh, they're suffocating the United States. And the thing is, you were bringing up the heroics being burned on waves and whatnot. What the United States is trying to do, and we've actually had this in the past in uh, prior regions when it comes to the HEC, the United States is willing to hold out forever on Tomb of Spider Queen because yeah, they true. know it's that's hard true. for the core to be killed off with the web weavers. And so they're willing to use these big heroics, rip tires and whatnot, to waste effectively, even though it hasn't been a waste, of the gems that are being turned in from South Korea. And they're just going to wait for that late game team fight, get a massive death timer of 50 second seconds, and then push across the map and start to break it down. So the question is, will it work out? Because right now, they have yet to even deal with the first layer of defense from South Korea. So that strategy starts to become you. This is so stressful for, for North America. They're going to back off once again. KCB finds an impale on Akira. There's a Wailing Arrow as well. Here can't get away with the natural agility, and he falls as the sanctification does not work out at all. Now, unaverted, Brandon has to back away. The massive shove does create a bit of space from Legacy. Lockdown's playing so great right now. Yeah. Like, they saw that there was an engagement on the bottom side. They were looking for Kira. And Tyrael so far has been doing a great job of, okay, I'm here to save you, Kira, if you get in trouble. And Lockdown identifying this two times said, okay, on the third time, that's not going to happen. He steps up, kills off two people, gets off the tether, delays him just long enough for Hanzo in that low health pool to be deleted. And now with six kills, they're going to go straight for a boss in the top lane. And the United States is looking shook. The, I, that You put it right. They're looking a little frazzled, a little shook. They got to breathe, as I keep saying, and try and find... A kill. This should kill. It's, there's Aye. your first blood for North America. There you go. They, they're back in the game right now. But of course, there's Drop still it. a solid level and a half lead to South Korea. They're about to hit 20s. And North America is going to try and buy a window to gain some more experience by getting a... Ugh, someone oh. needs to peel. Like, no one's making the shot call here that someone needs to peel away Lockdown. Lockdown effectively by himself about yes. three players from turning in because four players were trying to drop off their gems. And you usually want to go for the turn in to stop this boss play that's happening in the top lane. But now the United States is sitting on 86 gems because Lockdown was able to get off resets in the Phantom Knights. Oh, that was so unfortunate for US. Just stress right now. And, and it definitely... It's showing. Though South Korea, they're they're having a great game. They're having a fantastic time right now. 20 talent to your advantage. Blink for Sylvanas. She got rewind on that Anubrek. We've got unyielding despair for the Leoric. Okay, I like this upgrade. No, no buried alive, which he might have wanted it right there, but nah, he's fine. He's able to Wraith walk right out. Oh, there's oh, a doom. tomb. Containment, locked him in there. The tomb actually will disappear right when containment finishes up. There's sanctification. The United States able to save their teammates. Heroics are down here, and they're down 20 to 18 at the moment. Luckily, they don't have to deal with the web weavers. They did kill the boss on the top side. Just trying to poke out their opponent. And at this point, just got to wait out one more level. You're going to have waves coming your way. Yep. There's only 38 gems on the opposing side. Let uh, it all crash. Yeah, let it come to you. Take that experience, and then go for a 20 fight. If you can get a cool concussion mind pull, absolutely. But as I think you nailed it, Trixler. You just want to go ahead and let everything crash into you. Play it safe, turtle up, and wait for an even fight. I do believe at level 20, North America's got some good tools. Got that Sonic Arrow stun. That is going to be a big one as well for uh, for Hanzo. That's like the one thing I'm looking out for. Also, probably Sanctification upgrade as well as Liam just gets pulled around a little bit. Also, Liam will have buyback too. Oh, yeah, sure. That'll give him a chance to just run down anyone he wants to and then come back to the fight. There was, I, I no joke, there was one time I was casting Liam. This is ages ago in North America. He was doing this tactic on Malthiel where he was mid-maxing his buyback on No One Can Stop Death. He would respawn from it, get into a fight, go brawl out of his mind, but only just after that, res after that timer ended. He'd play super safe for the 180 seconds. It was a really interesting tactic because he would kind of just throw himself at the enemy and they would have to go deal with him while the rest of his allies were able to back off or find advantages elsewhere on the map. Interesting tactic, but we got those 20s. Also, Cannonball for the Junkrat when push comes to shove for the Stukov as well. Cannonball is massive for Wicked yeah, Clear, which quite literally. you're going to need here. Yeah, like, yeah quite literally. <laughs> a lot bigger there. Also great for pushing in forts and keeps later on if they do get that opportunity. The Web Weavers are being set up to be a nice layered amount of rush in here so they can play for a keep. The main target is probably going to be that keep on that top side because of the boss. But in order to set that up, you need to pull down the opposing team to the bottom portion of the map. So you see everyone grouping down here. 
trying to force people to get into a situation where they can exploit that and run the top lane. Liam, however, doing some pretty decent engages on Leoric on the bottom side. Containment disc comes down on Stukov, unaverted in a position where he can sink if need be. Arrow goes in the back line, though. Crow is low, unaverted, kites back with the Holy Ground, trying to keep KCB in lockdown down, but Leoric actually gets 1v1'd by Liam. I'm thinking that's a last right stack for Liam. Well done. Second kill for North America. They've cleared out mid. They've cleared out bottom. No keeps to fall. They're low, but st still the keeps are there, meaning no catapult. It's consistent catapult pressure. Tank. Oh, good save. Divine thing. Shield. Divine Shield with 60 HP. Someone get one auto attack. No cure misses it. The movement speed just a bit too much, but they can turn around this fight here. Lockdown's been setting up a lot of these kills. Malfi will get hit with the cocoon, but this is what the United States is waiting for. It's what they've been known for. Wait till the late game and then try to turn it around. It is a situation where the entire map looks rough for them. I mean, it's fully red for South Korea, but now they have all these gems, 135. Otter has in. the whole turn in. Yeah, they I love this. And they. It's almost like they're listening to you, Trek. Did you see that? Everyone was zoning while Madara turned in. It's almost like... Oh, yeah. I'll take credit for that. Sure. Yeah, it was exactly. all me. All me. All, you. all me and my, <laughs> my beautiful tie today. All right. So they listen to get that first turn in. Now, here's what has to happen. You have to push out the wave, start getting a little bit of blue on the map, get to a point where it's on top of those forts. You're probably not going to get all of them, but no. time it out to where the forts are pushing forward. You've gotten one low, and then you go for an immediate turn in afterwards, and then you just do unrelenting pressure over and over and over. South Korea knows this. So yes. they have to find a way to slow that down and stop it. And one way you can do it, just kill him, right? Speaking of unrelenting pressure, we didn't talk about Junkrat 16, the endless nades. Good synergy with his cannonballs as well. Bigger balls, gonna be hitting more Always enemy heroes. Good. Big W there. Mm -hmm. All right, top lane gets cleared out quickly, but the main focus here is middle and bottom lane. The United States has grouped everyone up together because they can't really afford to lose anyone. Liam right now sitting on 45 gems. If he does lose those, it'll be Unimbra's job to pick them up with that Eldruin. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. That where it's one up. of those things where it's like, nah, I don't really want to go in there. I don't have Sword of Justice. I can't go in and out. But no, I, I actually, I really like this because what it did for United States is it pushed out the waves. Everything is crashed into the forts. Now, there's 14 seconds until the clutch opens again. 60 gems are necessary. The vast majority is on Liam right now. But I do think South Korea's angling to deny that secondary turn in. And United States, they got to find a good kill here. Yeah, this One good kill into Uther, I feel like, would be exactly what they need. Because he also, he didn't go Redemption. He went Bulwark of Light. Madara steps up, able to get away at the last second. Saul looked down, uh, trying to come in and get a tether on top of him. Uh, but yeah, South Korea, I would say, actually defended that quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, they went for the layered approach to defense. They held the top lane first, worked in the middle, and then was willing to sacrifice the bottom lane because it's the least prioritized lane for them. They don't care if they lose that. Concussion Mine splits KCB. Easy Burrow charge out. We did get Malfiel picking up the mid lane bruiser camp, and it's the tense moment of trying to do the dance of getting the turn in. Sonic arrow out, that speed increase shows that it's, has, it's got the level 20 upgrade on the stun. But the bullseye, still just still just waiting for someone to be able to step in and get this turn in, but I think North America knows they're looking for a fight first. Tether, lockdown moves forward, misses containment disc, KCB comes in, and KCB now has to pop the rewind just to yeah. go for an escape. Liam's trying to chase, the arrow does miss because KCB is aware, but the last rights comes out. Hyde, however, as always, there with the Divine Shield. Heroic exchanges for both the teams, but two used for South Korea. Another attempt on the turn in, little poke out from Cure here and there. Looking on the low side of our, our map, Leoric just going to be... Is he looking for a turn in? Yeah, he's looking for... No, he's actually going to be going for Siege Giants. Nah, bottom lane wave. Prepping those cannons. He yeah, has a, I was, he has I was wondering there. if he was going to look for more pressure in the bottom lane for set up, but it's periodic catapult pressure, so absolutely. Lockdown is split from his team. The Holy Ground has created some space, but... Vigor well, Leoric is now. This is the, you got to be careful of this. Yeah, now yeah, Leoric behind them. Yeah. Whew. Liam, now all by his lonesome. He did just drop off, though, so he doesn't mind dying. Shield comes out. Santa got by back. Liam able to dash back to the left. This is nerve-wracking. I know. I'm, I'm like tensely staring. And I'm like, oh, right. I got to cast as well. Lockdown is a little bit low. Another vault out from her. I swore I heard last rights there for a second. But it actually just came off cooldown. 75 for the Sanctification. Leoric will have Entomb in 30. Divine Shield in 25. That's a big one to note. Divine Shield almost back. And as I mentioned, Bulwark of Light, which is the spread Divine Shield of yeah. 20. It's all nearby allies, which... The it's, two a, it's, a, it's a very small radius, so you got to clump quickly, but the side of South Korea, I feel like they can easily clump up the vast majority of their characters, or at least Uther can kind of clump up with some of the auto-attackers that are on that team. The Webweaver turn-in does come through for NA. What can they do? 
Bottom lane, it's defensive. Maybe they clear that out with Liam. It seems like he's rotating down to make sure that those Siege Giants are cleared out before the Web Weavers get in the lane. And Hans is working on the top side, too. Nice. The main focus here is to keep an eye on KCB and then lock down. If they're missing, you're going to see everyone from the United States back away, because those are the two main engagers going to force a fight, especially without Leorg having that buried alive. The Entomb we've seen multiple times has been escaped, right? Mm -hmm. And then Tyrio is also in a position where he'll jump in, drop the Holy Ground, help out. Uh, it hasn't been as effective as you would normally see. The Web Weaver in bottom is going to be around the fort for the side of North America, about halfway for mid lane and top lane a little bit back from there. So mid is going to be the target priority for United States. The gate will go down. Maybe we see a rotation to top. Bottom lane fort has already fallen. Locked so down flanking. Oh, oh, I do see that on the left-hand side. He can do two things here. He can either come in for an engage or he can clear out the mini wave to make the web weaver easier to defend. He decides to go in, gets a three-man tether, pulls in a couple of them. Material at the same time. Five seconds for that invocation. I think he missed it, actually. I think he went to go for it and got interrupted. Matara trying to kite out, but Malthiel gets picked up. He can buy back, and now Junkrat is down. So is Hanzo as well. South Korea has found their angle. That is a solid... Hold on. I'm going to hold it. Hold, hold. Liam did buy back in. Sanctification. That's a solid sanctification. Hey, Brandon may be able to get out of this. Yeah, but he wishes he could have used that earlier. The interruption was just so massive there for South Korea. Well done by them. Now, the Web Weavers are pushing on the bottom lane, but remember, South Korea did open the top side, and with yeah, the Nubarek and some Beatles, they can push for a win. Malthiel in a position, has last rights. There are no heroics up for at least eight seconds. Excuse me, two seconds here for containment disc for my Ev. And here comes a push for the core. Can they do it? Unaverted on the side. Containment disc hits Malphiel, which is the main damage dealer here. It looks like it. As South Korea starts to burn through this core. It drops down to 20. 10 and 0. South Korea will take game number one against the United States. GG, well played. And you know what? That game was 25 minutes. As I said, it's it's either it's it's either short or super long. And yeah. that was a hard fought game. North America did do their best to turtle up, to use the term, and hold out as long. The back to like they they tried so hard and I, and it just it just fell apart. Korea's aggression was on point today. Korea's show. Korea's looking like the team that I think a lot of us were expecting to see yesterday. Sure. It's just really hard to pull it off on Tuma Spider Queen, right? Like, if you are trying to stack those gems, you have that added weight of, like, okay, I can't die here, so right. I have to play effective. You have to get good trades. But, like, that's a situation where South Korea can excel. You had the constant flakes coming in from lockdown, and he got that one three man tether, and, and it was just lights out because Tyrion could hit this invocation. It's so easy to interrupt that. There's a huge windup where he brings the sword and comes down, and if you hit any type of CC during that, you get stuck there, and the whole team is just left just in dead chilling. water. And to say about Unaverted, like, he hit three or four sanctifications that were important that match that were yeah, going to win. Absolutely. And it all boils down to one, right? And that's the moment where South Korea knows that's where you go in and get the kill. And, of course, it was all she wrote, and that was the end of game number one. Regardless, though, I do like where the head is for the United States. Yes. They were playing around Liam and his strengths, and they were in a situation where it's like, okay, we can go to late game. We can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And they were playing to that strength. It was... I, I like the draft of North America as well, they, or United States. They had a very good draft, just Korea had more aggression and momentum that kept just building and building and building, yep. and that just forced everyone back. Either way, we'll see how things adjust. This is a best of five, and of course it's that Meta Madness style of draft. So the 10 heroes we just saw are unavailable for the next map, and we'll find out where we're going to in just a moment. Any other takeaways from that map? The fact that no one freed Harrison Jones? I think it's important that the support choke is really coming to fruition here, and it's become uh, kind of a, a main focus for a lot of our teams, especially yeah. with Lucio being taken out. And that's important for Hyde in particular, because when Hyde is able to get those carryable supports that he can just be dominant on, he changes the landscape of the game. With Stukov being taken away, that was obviously a plan for the United right. States going forward. Now they can start to focus on the drafts that will be important for them later on. My question is, what are we going to be seeing from Hyde? We have seen him play a lot of Ariel, but again, Ariel is one of these defensive supports, aside from the detainment strike. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's actually a really intelligent way of focusing on what the key players are for South Korea. That's a very good point as well. We get into map number two. Map one could have looked ske uh, sketchy, I guess you could sure. say, for, for United States. But as we progress and the hero pools get more and more limited, this is where I think the United States will start to gain momentum because they can play in these weird draft styles. It's, they've, been, they've been practicing it a little bit longer than South Korea, I do believe, and that's where maybe they get the advantage. Though, of course, if South Korea gets to a game three and it's already 2-0, yeah, it might be a quick, quick, quick shutdown because it's games four and five is really where we start to get into the weeds with some of these extremely fun drafts. It looks like we are just still uh, waiting for a lobby to figure out 
Well, I'm trying to figure out where we're going to go next. That's why I'm looking. I'm like, where are we going? I want to know. I I feel like it's going to be a BOE. North Korea, or not North Korea, Korea and North America. have North America, I had breakfast with them, Uh and they were like, we're banning BOE today. Yeah, BOE has always been. So I don't, like, maybe production can confirm it, but I do think that BOE should be banned by North America, at least from what I heard from them at breakfast about an hour ago. Okay. Uh, So maybe Braxis. Uh, would be- because that's actually what North America apparently has been banning. They're, they're quite literally the conversation was we're banning BOE. Yeah, if they take us to Braxis, we'll just do some weird stuff. Uh, so yeah, they're trying to figure out where exactly they want to go. Volskaya Indries was brought up, but was it Volskaya an unplayable map for this? I tournament? don't think it's playable. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's unplayable there. So mm. they're trying to figure out where exactly they can go and go from there. Uh, so yep, that is an update from production. We will be waiting to see which match we will be moving into. Because yeah, that does really affect the draft. That Rainer has been incredibly important yeah. for South Korea. Uh, and it is something that you should start either accounting for if you are setting up for your drafts and what maps you're going for, or even trying to say, okay, well, if we bait you into the Rainer, maybe we can start working on some mobile characters, some characters that are good at flanking and getting behind you, because Jimmy does not have very much success if you can get behind him. True. It's He's kind of the... He's a run forward marine. He's yeah. not. He's not good at running back. There's no medevac flying over his head to beam him or you know pick him up and take him back and boost. I mean, away. technically there could be a. Med- there could yeah, be there a could medevac. Be a med- they they could play a little. St- South Korea could play a little bit of Starcraft too in Heroes of Storm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so surprised that we haven't seen like a Zagara or anything in the top lane, and that's what I'm kind of wondering if we get to mm. the grand finals, if that kind of stuff will. Start have to we, come to fruition. Have we had any Zagar? There's been there's been like one Zagar, right? I I, I like I, I vaguely remember there being a Zagar, but it might have actually been from a scrim that I was watching as well. But we do have our upcoming map, map number two in this best of five series between South Korea and United States is gonna be Infernal Shrines. Tried and true, another really, really good solid map. And okay. We, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be Inferno Shrines here. Uh, so I think the notes going into the bands is going to continue to be a URL ban. Um, yeah. As this is a map that camp mercenaries are important to be a part of, and that's one thing that Liam's URL does well is, okay, it's time to go get the camp at a one-minute mark. He's already wrote it down in 50 seconds. He's yep. there. He he's, will he, be there for He's the there as it spawns. He's got, he's got that timing on point. I would also I'd consider from South Korea, Sergeant Hammer. South yeah. Korea does like it's, it's a great it's great for this map. Napalm Strike is good for clearing out the the monkeys, the skeletal defenders, but also BFG is the burst factor. That's something that I think a lot of people overlook. Like BFG, it's it's kind of like Hinterland's Blast, but no, it's no. not. It's way better because it's a giant bullet that does a ton of burst damage. Use it at the end of the fight. Don't use it as initiator. Use it as a closer. Or someone's running away and you just angle it down the lane and boom, you got him. I hate Andrew's Blast. It's nowhere near. I do. I do too. I can't. I love Falstead. He's picked. like one of my favorite characters to play. If you don't have like a tyrial judgment or something that can force a fight, like I don't understand why you would ever pick him on his blast. Like Money Gus has so much more control. But that's a different discussion. That is, yeah. Maybe we'll get down that road you, later you, today. You, you set me up on a tilt train right there, just bringing that up. But <laughs> okay, then you can do the same to me later. Just bring up Phoenix when I, when. <laughs> oh, Phoenix tilts you. From I don't Kill like Boss? his heroics. I don't like his heroics. Oh, Phoenix a character. I like my Phoenix a heroic. Oh, oh no, the, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no. Kalefoss Phoenix is fine. Phoenix Dragoon was, Phoenix. I don't like his heroics. Phoenix laser beam is good on practice, though. So, like you literally. Yes, I will on. agree with that. I will agree with that. But All right. That's a heroic for two minutes to clear out a Zerg wave. Woo. That's all stuff we can talk about later. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm all excited. <laughs> no, I think it's fun to have these discussions. That's the whole point of Heroes of the Storm. There's all these it cool is. characters to play. Okay, we'll be heading into Infernal Shrines here. The draft is ready to go. And our first pick will be heading over to the United States. So they will also have the first ban. South Korea choosing the map for us. Okay. Malfurion gone from the map. We were also talking about other things that work well for Infernal Shrines or even just picks that don't want to be dealt with. Trace was another one that's been constantly banned out. I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's a consideration here as well. Tracer being able to flank into the enemy backline, the healer during the objective phase, cause a little bit of chaos, rewind out, excuse me, recall out. It's it's a great way to just constantly be a harassment into the backline. But of course, not sure what United States want to change up here. That first draft, it wasn't awful. It just, it just didn't execute the way that I think it was expected to. Sure. Uh, Garrosh and Malfurion banned out, so looking like they might want to run a frontline heavy composition with Garrosh being taken Maybe Diablo out. early. Yeah, sure. Uh, and Diablo was banned out by them actually in game number one. 
Okay. So them having that first pick would leave that Diablo open. So now South Korea has to consider that. If they do ban Diablo, then Tracer is available. But I do like the adjustment by the United States by banning Malfurion. That makes the Tracer like look less playable. True, true. Uh, so that means South Korea can go, well, maybe Tracer being open here is okay. And they can use that to either Ooh. switch out the draft completely or even head into Tracer. But South Korea sticks with the hogger ban, so Diablo will be the first pick. Snap onto Diablo from United States. I do like it. Good initiation. Apocalypse or Lightning Breath are fantastic heroic pickups for him. He could go Fire Stomp build. He could go Shadow Charge build. I do think there are options for Brandon here on the side of the United States. But South Korea, how do they want to open things up? As we mentioned, that Tracer is up and available. Could see it played. Yeah, this is where the drafting gets really interesting, right? This, this is what we get Ooh. traded with. Tychus and Sonya. Sonya continues to get stronger uh, due to most of the top laners being taken out. And then, of course, you're just naturally good on this map. One character that we always have to discuss as well is Kerrigan here. Uh, and we do have Kerrigan players on both of our teams. Oh, that's a very good point. This is an amazing map for Kerrigan as well. The team fighting, Ultralisk dive. But what do they want to play with this Diablo? Are they going to look for just hard initiation, single target blow up? Medivh has been a common trend for a lot of our teams. Yeah. Wow, is, nice so. call. Medivh and Deckard. I like that. Uh, just the setup that he brings in, you don't even have to use your Apocalypse. You can go for it. Lightning Breath is usually preferred on this map because you get to control the shrines themselves. But you do set up Diablo to walk up to a target, which is always strength. Usually his, his engage can be his downfall, even though it's still his greatest strength. It's kind of a double-edged sword. But if you have a Medivh who has a Leyline Seal on three targets, you can go, we want this one. And then you pick it and go for it, and then Decker Kane builds into that. I'm just looking at this. I'm just staring at this ban. It will be the Tracer. Okay, so Tracer banned away. Medivh, Deckard, Diablo. United States still looking for a solo lane and some sort of hyper carry. South Korea needs a tank. I'm racking my brain, of course, because now, now it's like, what's banned away? Murden hasn't been banned out, correct? Not yet, no. Murden so Mur still Murden, Murden could still Murden be still played here. The grand finals. But it's actually a false dead. They want to get rid of the gust away Okay, I actually really like what United States banned away. Get rid of the gust so there's no AoE disengage from the hard initiation of United States. This is a wrinkled brain draft so far, yeah. Yeah, it's very wrinkly. I don't even think they had Tracer as like an idea of that they wanted to play in this draft, but just oh, because I agree. of the actual Absolutely. fear of it, uh, South Korea wasted a ban on it, which United States, okay, cool. Could we see maybe Vala? Reign of Vengeance at level 10 is really good for synergy into Diablo for more CC. Her W build on this map is great for clearing the shrine. She could go autos if if the Vala player is feeling confident that they're not going to die a bunch and lose all their Gambit stacks. I do like the idea of the Vala. I think Greymane's still up and available as well, so they could look for the Greymane for more dive with the Diablo too. Vala's always a strength. I wouldn't mind seeing a Chromie here. It helps out in the transformation phases because he can poke. Ooh, D.Va! Okay, and the Mephisto. Okay, so there we go. I think the Mephisto's also deny since the Alex Straws was picked up. They might have been angling for the Chromie, as you were mentioning, because Modder is so confident on that character. But Mephisto Alex Straza is a beautiful synergy, and it would slot into this draft quite well. Because it looks like main tank may, yeah, Sony in the solo lane, the Mephisto would have been perfect. So how does South Korea change up their draft if that was the case? Maybe they pick up the Chromie. I'm waiting for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make a call here. These drafts are getting wild. Zul. It is time. Okay, so they can keep up with the experience here, even stretch them thin a little bit. But the team fight is stellar for both teams, actually, when it comes to the Shrine phase. It comes down to uh, execution uh, and control on the Odin and the Alex Straza, uh, which Mediv here can pull off. I, I think we're going to have a lot of rotations from the United States yeah. trying to find pickoffs, and it all comes down to whether or not South Korea is able to identify them. This, this, th these drafts feel brawly, and it feels like this is gonna. We're we're in for a treat for in front of Shrine series. We're about to load on in. Of course, let's do some predictions. I'm I'm gonna lean on to North America like the, uh, on this one. I think the Diablo initiation. You've got that Decker Caden creating shapes, maybe telling a story. Maybe we even see Lornado for a little bit of that control. Maybe even more Nados at level twenty. Sure. Doubtful, but it's fun. I'm all about Diva, man. Here, like ah. I think D.Va is such a unique character. Oh, I agree. She works in Heroes of the Storm, and I think she might even be underrated by a lot of folks. And she gets you better, right. obviously, with this draft format that we have. But I love what she brings to just being able to control, grab shrines, that nuclear explosion as well to help kill them off for that last-second type of uh, either explosion to kill off the shrines or even for just area denial. I'm going to stick with the United States on this one. I think we're going to go up to a 1-1. 
I like the idea of a 1-1 one, one for this one. We're going to go ahead and jump on in. On the left-hand side, the United States, Medivh to be played by Cure. Madara on the Mephisto, Unaverted playing Diablo. Liam piloting the Diva Mech, and Legacy will tell us a naptime story with Deckard Kane. Ah, uh, I do love me a story. To the far right in the red, Lockdown playing Zool. KCB on May, Crow on Tychus, Kiri on Sonya, and Hyde here to show off the Alex Straza. Look at that flex. I wish Thank I you, Ops. <sighs> I try to speed up. I don't have the Tychus look. I had to hey, up on hey, the hey, hey. I know. It's I not know. how you look on the outside. It's how you feel on the inside. I felt awful. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I tried. I tried. I tried. All right. Well. Uh, oh, man. These... You know what? Maybe one day we'll have a beach day and you and I can just we'll just do speedos together. You are so supportive and helpful, but I'm gonna have to deny that request. <laughs> You're lost. I, I agree, I agree. <laughs> you are such Crow, a helpful person. Crow is is gonna be pushed around by unaverted, and that will be first blood for the United States. See, that's how United States wins. We talk about speedos. I, I, yeah, I guess. Probably. Okay. I'm that's my best guess. Either way, good initiation from the United States. Lockdown should be fine. Oh, the bone person comes in just a little bit too late. Good Here comes blocks. the heals, and he's going to be able to get the bone armor up as well. But yes, this is what United States is going to be doing. They're going to be rotating off of Kier's shot calls. They're going to be moving in between waves, trying to be as fast as possible. They want to catch Zul or Sonya out, uh, and that will be their main focus. Meanwhile, South Korea, they just want to get to the shrines on even experience, and that's why we have the Zul here to help out with that wave clear, so they can set up and fight on the shrines. KCB, though, Getting chased down. Madara trying to keep up with it as well. Unaverted being slowed like crazy uh -oh. by Mayan or Blizzards. Now on the top left, though, Kier has been caught by Lockdown. Lockdown currently in this weird 1v3 while Unaverted is down the bottom side. All right, welcome to Brawl of the Storm. It's it's like this weird ARAM, but we're still shifting around the map at the same time. I do want to point out something. We didn't talk about this in the draft whatsoever while we're waiting to see if this fight breaks out further. No. Alex Straza was taken after Decker Kane. Decker Kane is notably a counter to Alex Straza because she puts a giant circle on the ground and says, here is where the heal is. Decker Kane at level seven has a button that says no healing by 75% for four seconds. So I'm a little worried about South Korea on that Alex Straza pickup. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you can all, but you know that, right? When you pick in the Alex Straza. Oh, absolutely. The way you play. I, I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and a tie too. Uh, so you're going to throw down your circle of hopes. Uh, a little bit more retroactively, so you force the Decker Kane to maybe overstep, and oh, then if they do overstep, point. you can turn the fight around. Uh, but the main issue and the reason why you pick Alex Straza here is to be able to go in that dragon form. So you throw yes. down the circle of hope, and then immediately come out to the big healing afterwards. And you don't even care what Decker Kane does. You get the double. You get the double circle from base form and and Venn dragon diagrams. queen form. But that is another kill into Tychus for North America. The Decker Kane scroll the ceiling locks KCB. Here comes the shadow charge overpower and no punch to the face. Actually, it is a punch. To the face from Medivh, 20th stack for Cure, and that's a double kill for North America. They are hunting right now, and that's what they should be doing. South Korea should get a note of this as well. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Sonya is working on these towers while these kills wow. are happening, and she will start to take out a fort. Now, Diva's wave clear isn't the greatest, but she can kind of hold her own and keep soaking that experience. The main thing you have Diva here for is for the Shrine phase, and speaking of, it has just activated. It'll be up in two seconds, and now we need to see the strength of South Korea's composition. This is what they built for. They want to win these shrines. The United States will probably try to portal behind and look for Alex Raza in particular. If Diablo can get there, that's where they can be deadly. Also to note, we will be having Fire Stomp build on Diablo. Lockdown backing away with not a whole lot of mana. He's alright though. Doesn't seem like United States cares about this first Frozen Punisher. Looking for more kills first and KCB is potentially caught out. The icing says nope. Able to ice gate away. 23, excuse me, 25 to 7 and climbing. In terms of Shrine Control, United States says, okay, we can't pick up Zul, we'll see what we can do over here. Hyde immediately around that 30 mark is going to pop the dragon no matter what, and he does just that. The AoE clear is helpful, and that's one thing United States can do here. They know that they fight the Shrine, so you should just rotate over, force them to use these massive cooldowns, peel back, and then prepare to keep fighting and hunting. They just want to find Zul over and over. Deve has floated around down by Zul in the bottom lane. We've got Brandon on the left-hand side with Legacy, Liam, and Madara. The rest of South Korea actually splitting up a little bit as well. Sonya top, Zul bottom. Diva, Mech Explosion, you were talking about this in the draft. Good zoning tool, allowing a window for United States to start clearing out this Frozen Punisher. And it will be the fort front gate to fall. That's the expectation. Bit of, bit of scratching on the fort itself. Maybe actually not even the fort front gate. I love the way they play this, actually. 
uh, the nuclear explosion, as mentioned, uh, excuse me, just the explosion in general, mm -hmm. uh, helping out with the delay, but also getting damage on top of the Immortal, because it does a substantial amount of damage, especially if you're towards the center there. But also, Madara is able to jump forward because there's no minion wave anymore, and just zone at the back line. The Frozen Punishers, this entire tournament, have been incredibly effective on Phase 1. Usually they get about half a key, or half a fort, and we've seen instances where they even get an entire fort. But because... South Korea was unable to step up due to the zoning potential from the United States. We only see a sliver of health lost here in the middle lane. That is such a great defense by the U.S. Absolutely beautiful defense right now. We're angling for maybe another fight in this mid lane. Portal forward from Medivh. Hyde is trying to back away. Good angle onto the Alex Straza for a shadow charge. Does not look like the rest of the United States was able to charge in fast enough with Brandon. Now, I do want to note that during all this aggression we've seen from the United States, we've been complimenting with their three kills. Sonya and Zul have been pivotal. Yes. Top lane, Sonya's been working on that top lane. She's already got a little bit of fourth there. Zul's been working on the bottom lane, pushing it in, keeping up that wave clear. And the experience, while it's starting to climb for the United States, South Korea is hanging in there. They should be able to get their 10 before this next shrine phase and be just fine. So they're still in the game here. South Korea's in a great position. The United States will have to continue trying to break away with with that lead. Diablo has full souls and he's about to have the reduction in souls consumed from when he dies, but we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Actually, we can take a look at some of those heroics. No, we can't because they didn't pick them yet. Dang it. <laughs> they, they were just about to pick them before the pause. Cure needed a pause so that way they could discuss their heroics. I think that's what it was. Yeah, probably going to be uh, APOC here from Diablo, although I do like the Lightning Breath. There's a couple of things to consider with the APOC. First off, you do have the combination of mm -hmm. uh, Leyline Seal into Apocalypse, but one, Ice Block on May. If she ever does use that, you can time it out to where you try and get her locked into that situation. You can force her out of the Ice Block earlier, and if she doesn't go that route, then of course you can get her locked into it, uh, and then go for a hard engage afterwards. You want to stop May from using her abilities and using those fail saves because she is pretty squishy if you can get on top of her. Absolutely. The other thing I'm thinking about too with the apocalypse is there's the there's also a synergy of stay a while and listen. You've sure. got two sleeping talents, I guess oh, you could point. say. Yeah. So there's two different ways to play it. If the leyline seal misses, or you could even feign it. You could feign it with a leyline seal. Everyone gets in position to save that one character from the apocalypse, but it never comes. Yeah. And now everyone's kind of weirdly out of position. And then the Decker Kane stay a while comes out. So I think there's there could be layers to this 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 play from. Uh, from the United States. I am curious, because you can see it, I think, a little bit better than me. What is Kier stacking right now? Because I know he's not done, but he should be fairly close. 26th at the moment out of okay. the 40 needed, so 14 away. Um, so yeah, when it comes to the heroics for the United States, it's basically what they want to run with, right? Like, do they want to have just slowing down the fights with Stay A While Listen, mm -hmm. APOC for Burst, maybe, or do they just want to just prevent the opposing team from being effective in team fights, where Lightning Breath becomes a little bit stronger. I do like Lightning Breath. It is pretty here. strong there. And then they, do they want to start fighting for shrines in the late game? So that's what it kind of boils down to. Now, looking over to South Korea, uh, Zul has been picking up the mages that have been helpful. Skeletal mages yeah. will be a nice addition as well. They they deal damage. They slow. So it it's also provides vision too. You can throw it into the shrine in case you don't know where the enemy is. Maybe yeah. put it in a bush. Uh, there is always a discussion of like maybe if we do go Poison Nova, do we want to stretch out Mediv a little bit with the Force of Will? But mm. usually it's kind of yeah. not a play that you see in competitive. And I think play. Deckard has enough healing through mm -hmm. with potions and pots that it should be fine. I think he's also potions of shielding at level four. Sure. So it's even more just mitigation of incoming damage potentially. The other thing too, uh, just circling back to Deckard, the level 20, the upgrade on his stay while and listen... Oh, I'm blanking on the name off the top of my head. But either way, it's 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 giving blinds and it also gives a silence after sure. it ends. So that's going to be a nice addition as well. But back over to Korea, you've got B, uh, you've got Commandeer Odin. Mm -hmm. Assuming Ice Wall for May. Yeah, that's been the, the Avalanche here. could be picked up to push the Diva Mech out because I do think it consumes the Diva Mech. Sure. And will push away that. So if you want to deny Diva Mech from clearing out the shrine, that's a possibility. Well, one of the things about Avalanche that really sucks is you have to put yourself out of position for it to be effective. Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, you either come in for a flank, which feels a little bit awkward on me. You have May. to like, ice into the back, yeah. and now you're here, and your team's all the way over here. But there are Medivh portals that are coming towards you constantly, so now you have a way to disengage if the mm -hmm. portals are coming your way by just throwing out the Avalanche. And even if it doesn't hit anybody, at least you know, hey, I may be able to read this and get a couple seconds to walk away. Uh, so there is something to say about the Avalanche being useful there. And if you do hit it, and you hit two to three people, they get locked down for a full CC train. You walk him down, Alex draws a tyke, is just shelling away and take off the pickoff. So. Well, the one thing that I always like to bring up with Avalanche, and I think this is always skipped over in, in the notes of it, is that it is a 0.5 stun per hero consumed. Yeah, it's good. So if four heroes get consumed, that's a two-second stun. 
that's forever in here as a storm. You might as well just let the core fall at that point. Yeah. <laughs> now, with that being said, it's probably going to be ice wall. <laughs> so if it's going to be ice wall, of course. But one can dream. Exactly. You know, like, that's our job. We, we're see, we're here to, to talk about the things that probably won't happen. I just want to yell snowball, right? Just, snowball! Would, yeah, snowball. <laughs> that's what I want to do. I if it happens and it, and it does go on I'm just going to stop we talking. Can, can we both just yell snowball at the same I, time? I'm all for it. Okay, I'm all good. for it. That's what I'm all about. I'd rather do that over wearing Speedos. So. <laughs> all right. So we should go snowboarding together then. That's, there you more, go. that's more clothing. That sounds way more fun there. What are you thinking for Alex Straza though? Uh, Alex Straza, Life Pinder is pretty easy to call here. Um, Cleansing Flame has been picked once this tournament. The issue with Cleansing Flame is either you have to be really safe with the Alex Straza or you have to just do it in the middle of team fight and you have that wind up that can be dangerous. Yeah. It's like Tyrael, what we saw in game number one. Yep. It gets interrupted and it's like, well, guess I'm dead. Fun game, guys. Guess I'll just die. Yeah, but the good news is is we are on Infernal Shrine, so you're probably going to be in dragon form, so you can skip out on that animation mm -hmm. and go into the flight. Uh, it's just a matter of, like, are you going to be chasing down the opposing team and trying to find kills while healing your teammates? And usually you want that with, like, a melee assassin. And the melee assassin here is, is Zul and Sonya. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sonya works, Zul not so much. Yeah, and I was, I was thinking about Lifebinder, and Lifebinder is a little awkward into the Decker Kane's uh, Emerald, as I was mentioning earlier. Sure. But at level 20 also, Life Binder upgrade is super duper good because of the extra, the extra procs. Okay. So we'll have to see if the extra procs will be picked up at level 20, even sure. if we get the Life Binder to begin with. Uh, last but not least, well, we're just talking about heroics. We do, by the way, for anyone that's wondering, why are they just talking? Where is the game? There is a pause currently. We've got a mouse issue for one of the players. So Trix and I are going to be breaking down some of the things that, well, we can break down for you before we get back into the game, kind of get an idea of where the game will go or sure. on Infernal Shrines. By the way, uh, we, we've had one Punisher so far. We're about to get probably the second Punisher announcement once we get back into this game. But, of course, last but not least, Sonya. I mean, Wrath of Berserker, this is a fantastic map for it. But, of course, leap into the backline onto, onto a Medivh, that's so hard to pass up, and it's so rewarding. I think it's such a funny thing, because, like, I remember when we started first playing HEC, and I know the thing, the game's change and what. Of course. Uh, Sonya's leap was, like, frowned upon, right? It was, like, Wrath all the way. Oh, abs like, yeah. Like, I used to play Leap all the time. Yeah. Like, You're bad for it. And I'm yeah. like, just wait. One day I'll be right. And we've come full circle. And part of that is because we don't have all these support to cleanse and whatnot. Uh, so, Sodia with the Leap being available. I mean, Hostile Up showed it in the last series. You jump into the middle of a fight, you're able to disrupt momentum. And that's what Hero yes. Storm is all about, is taking momentum and riding it or stopping it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Sonia does so great. Usually, it can be used as a way to get it, uh, to play in the middle of a fight, because people naturally clump up in Heroes of the Storm, because you're trying to chase someone down, mm -hmm. you get into an area, and if you can find two or three to hit, you're good to go. And it sounds like our mouse is looking good for our players, so let's hop in, and we will now find out what the Heroics are. So it has been Lightning Breath. That has been picked up here for Diablo. Medivh will pick Leyline Seal and... Oh, yes, Bunny Hop! I'm sorry. Oh, God. I love I like Bunny, Bunny Hop. Hop. No, I'm all for it. I love Bunny Hop. We, we all about it. We didn't talk about D.Va talents at all. Uh, Bunny Hop is just one of these abilities, man. That, of, of course, if you hit a couple of hits on people, you oh. can send them into a situation. Oh, it looks like... Uh, we, we get time to talk about Bunny Hop. Potentially uh, an issue still overall. Uh, just so you know, our players do have up to 15 minutes if they have any issues to try and fix things up. A couple of minutes have been uh, burnt here, but we want to make sure everyone's in the best situation Never. Exactly. Uh, have you played the level 20 bunny hop? Oh, where you just stand still. It's really good for Braxis holdout, actually. When sure. you want to control, if you're solo lane or you just want to control one of those beacons, you you pop it, you walk away, go get a cup of tea, and come back. And oh my God, we got a Zerg wave. Let's go. That explains where my teammates are going in most of my matches. Yes, exactly. I love it for boss control. And sadly, there's no boss on this map, so that's pretty much where it's at. Just basically an objective area that you want to hold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and there might be a case for the shine, but still, the idea is you can brush down a target, you follow up Diablo here, hit him a couple of times because Diablo is CCing them, and you just keep them stuck in the location. So Bunny Hop coming in here for Liam. Wrath of Berserker for the Sonya. Life Binder on that Alexstrasza. Skeletal Mages, as we mentioned. Wrath of Berserker will be popped in the top lane, but Cura's just landed with a Leyline Seal into the Endurance of Hate. A beautiful kill from North America. Fourth kill of the game. Portal out. Looking at the May. Can KCB back away? And Sonya couldn't do anything there. It's like Skullcracker, right? You just right. keep hitting them. You stop them from warbending, and that's what Sonya tries to save. It is a life bender coming in from hide, and will keep KCB alive for now. But now South Korea knows a jig. Okay, it's going to be a full CC trade on one of us. How do we stop that from happening? You can do early life benders. You can go into Alex Strauss the moment you see the engagement. Go for a push away. Back them out. And we did get the snowball, by we the did. way. We did. From from May, so all the tools Time are to coming out here. That's Time to right. Go sledding trick, which you're an expert in, right? All the snowboarding. I love it. Heck yes, man. So 
the so Medivh will clear out bottom. He's actually gonna he's portaling back and forth in bottom. I, maybe he'll catch one more wave down there. Not 100% sure, but our shrine will be activated in the top lane. This is gonna be a mortar punisher as Zul is. Oh wait, Zul in mid. Zul in mid might get caught out here. Nah, he's fine. I was watching that Medivh looking for the portaling unaverted was sharking around with that Diablo. The United States draft has just been so good at defense. It even looks like it. Like, all right, let's just soak up the map. Let's make sure Zul doesn't get ahead of us here. We'll rotate in to try and force him to finish off the shrine, because some teams, if they realize that you're not contesting them, will go to 39, get all the ways pushed out, and go from there. But they're just looking for kills and then playing for defense. That's what they have the option for on the bomb here from D.Va. Leyline Seal comes out on the top right side, so South Korea should step up and start using their transformations once again. And you see everyone positioning. They're ready for escape. They don't want to fight for the Shrine. They just want to force South Korea to finish it up so they can set up for defense. Hang on to Brandon. Just waiting for the initiation. It's going to be on Demay, who was angling for that avalanche. It definitely looked like, unfortunately, not connecting onto anywhere, not even utilized. Still 13 talent tier advantage to United States, but South Korea will pick up the second Punisher of the game, Mortar Punisher, for the top. And this fort is exposed. No gate because you had mentioned Sonya was slamming. She was jamming on this top lane. All right, let's see what this Punisher can do here. One of the weaker Punishers, Unaverted, will take that shot. Durant of Hate coming on afterwards in case anyone did go for a hard engage. Madara getting a bit of poke with the Shade of Mephisto and Lightning Nova as well. Unaverted, still, st he's, he's forward. We also have Super Pots for Decker Kane. That is, a, that is a big note at level 13. We're not gonna be going into the Ancient Blessings. It's just extra healing, keep everyone alive. There's a possibility for infinite pots, the bottomless flasks at level 20, just for even more safety. It's something I take when I play Decker Kane. If I get picked because no one peels for me, at least my team is still has heals on the battleground. Oh yeah, rejuvenation can be great. Mm -hmm. uh, these potions are also set up for Matara, so we can go in and get healed up yep. when he uses his jump ward. Matara goes in for a portal, gets some damage in. Sonya trying to stay alive. Lockdown rotating over. Diva is not here, so Leyline Seal will be used, so they still have that 4v3. Lightning breath focusing down whoever targets they can get. Stay a while and listen. There's a life in from high. Matara trying to focus down a target. Skull Mist is coming out, but the healing from South Korea has been pretty darn good. However, May eventually does fall, and here's a bunny hop. She's going up and down, locking down the targets. Matara with the chase, but look at Crow all by himself on the back left. Crow on that Tychus should fall. That's the expectation. I don't know how we can get out of this one. He'd need a miracle. That will be a triple kill for the side of United States. Things are looking a little shaky. They lose their fort, but they hold on. And the other thing to note too, more kills, pushing that experience up further. This is 16 talents here for United States. It almost feels like the early game was very much macro. It was, we gotta get to 16. When we get to 16, we turn it on. And that is exactly what's already happening. I mean, it's the old story of kills versus objectives, right? And if you look at the map, yeah. South Korea uh, with the fort in the top left is ahead because they do have the fort. But as you mentioned, the experience lead for United States and Durance. those kills is going to give them a chance to try and even that up with the fort here on the bottom right. But KCB is already down here. So here's the thing that you have to think about for the United States. Sure, we're getting kills, but when do we get to the core? And that's going to be their focus for the next few minutes. I do think this is where it needs to shift into that mentality. We need bomb. to start going core. Good utilization of the bomb to make sure that Diva Mech is not lost. That's a .5 kill for the enemy. Leyline Seal connects on to... That was the May. Bunny hop. Is Look, there another bunny hop? Just came up. Let's see if he's going to go for it. But the ice block, Liam decides to back up. Also, he didn't have his uh, bomb set up in case he did get in trouble. The entire build for D.Va here is just building straight to W build, right? It's all very defensive and to make sure yeah. they don't have to deal with any damage coming on the team so they can win team fights. Skeletal Mages have been summoned by Zul. Lifebinder out from the Alexstrasza. No healing denial from the Deckard Kane. He does have that Sapphire Top Slow lane. onto KCB. Top lane exactly. Sonya split off a little bit ago, and she's been split pushing, pulling that experience in, and it's about to be 16s apiece. Regardless of those seven extra kills, Korea still looking comfortable in map number two. They're just playing the macro game. Exactly. Slow down your opponent, eat up those heroics, trade as you need, let Sonya be the side carry, and they can play this strategy the entire way if the United States is unable to ever get the map moving into their favor. And one way you can do that is through the Merc Camps, which they're going to start trying to focus on. Uh, as you see, Legacy already working on this left side. South Korea actually grabs there. Now Madara comes in, but I do wonder if it's slightly too late. Nah, it doesn't look like South Korea is going to go for an invade. Big things to note really quickly, level 16 is just around. Sonya didn't go into Giant Slammer for the percent-based slam. She's looking at more defensive activatables. Also, we've got the Temporal Flux on Medivh. That's a huge one for Medivh. Cooldown reduction on Leyline Seal from autos, as well as bigger cooldown reduction from landing those Arcane Rifts into enemies, which is, I mean, this is a map where we typically 5v5 every 
four-ish minutes or less around these shrines. Yeah, that's going to be great back-to-back-to-back -back -back ley line seals. And one's thrown to the face of, I believe, Sonya. Speaking of another shrine, Arcane Punisher is up and available. Sonya does move in. Popping that Wrath, working on trying to clear out these shrines. KCP goes for a hard engage. They are on Diablo. He is fully tanky here. Stay well. Listen as well. We interrupt Sonya, who was going for the spin. Oh, Bunny Hop coming in, locking down High though. High trying to go to Dragon Form, but he gets interrupted. And that's nice. going to be two down as the United States finds nine kills to zero. And this looks like it could be their first shrine in the game. And now, finally, they can take out a fort. But also, look at the top lane. They had a camp pushing in there that Zul has to go out and clear. Zul manages top lane, and the Arcane Punisher goes over to North America, but they're not done with the double kill. They want to make it a triple, as Tychus may have been caught out. May comes in. No snowball available for her for the next 66 seconds. And I think KCB says, Crow, you're on your own, bud. I'm out of here. And he knows it, too. He's trying to escape there. Finally gets deleted. Four gets cleaned up. And that's actually kind of massive, because now huge. the Punisher can move forward. If they could, they would love to push up and try and kill this gate, because that gives them a chance to get over to the keep. 40 on Tychus. He's one of the biggest defenders for the team as well. 35 seconds still to go for him. I really want to see North America push this hard. Portal up for Unaverted. Ley lines up if they re if they need a if they need a panic disengage tool. Durance of hate is up as well. Six seconds on the stay well and listen. Twenty two on that lightning breath and nine to go on the diva bunny hop. The jump is Line still seal. up. They're doing everything they can here to just appeal the mouse and get the keep. Even the bomb. Oh the Durance! <gasps> oh the my explosion! gosh! Great catch there, Diva, showcasing that zoning potential. Liam continues the car on the left side, and this Punisher has yet to jump another on target, kill, the and they might th another kill, and they can end. That's a Punisher jump over onto the Zool. Diva's trying to set this up. Liam wants to get this kill. Nice overpower into the Decker Kane scroll of ceiling. Huge stay a while and listen. Bunny hop coming through. Lightning breath will be melting May and Trick. I think North America will equalize. Parity has been found in our second best of five of the day. Look like we're going one to one. Just absolutely controlling space here. South Korea yet to even have a kill on the board. Sonia, what's she going to do here? She's trying to clear out the mini wave, but she's getting deleted. That core is now falling. 60 down to 50, moving slowly to the 40%. South Korea will have Alex throws up here in three seconds and the life bender. This Punisher is still sorry, alive. Did, did Medivh just take a ridiculous level 20? Eh, he probably did. He the did. Game sorry, I saw her. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's going to be it here as the United States ties up the series as we get ready for game at number three. We are in a one-to-one -one right now. Just a master class on movement with those portals, being able to get into those fights. And the plan was pretty simple for South Korea. Play the map. But then you lose one or two suddenly on the shrine, and you see United States rush down the bottom, and they killed a fort, a keep, and the core all in one swift play. I, I think that was the game plan. It was hold till 16. 16 was so huge for them. Temporal Flux is just the, the big one, being able to get so many of those. And Death Timers, too. And Death Timers, as well. Death Timers are starting to get really longer at that point. But I got to say, North America, they hold out, and they're able to take map number two, Infernal Shrines. We got a one-to-one -one series. This should be a fun one. I'm, I'm feeling like this might go five. Both teams are currently heating up, so let's go to a short break, and then we'll be right back with more Hots action. Welcome back to Berlin, Germany. We're in the middle of a series of United States versus South Korea, and we're tied up one-to-one. -one. Some different strategies coming out from both of our teams so far. Loving what we're seeing so far. Good aggression from Korea, and I like what North America did to respond to that aggression in yeah. map number two. They said, you be aggressive to us. We'll, we'll take some kills here and there, maybe a couple early on, but they played the slow game, and I think that threw Korea off because we had talked about this in map number one. If Korea can't get that, like, that dive, that momentum, they start to kind of feel a little awkward, and it was showing a little bit later in that map number two. We're getting ready for our third map in the second best of five of the day here in Nations Cup 2023, and Trick, I'm going to ask you, where are we going to be going off to? We are going to Sky Temple, which Ooh. excites me for this draft in general, because uh, to allude to your point, in game number two, we are on Inferno Shrines, and of course South Korea and uh, United States know what they want to do on those. You know the strategies, you know mm -hmm. the plays you want to go for, the transformation comps, etc. Uh, but what Kira and crew did is they flipped it on their head and said, what if we just don't play the objectives and we just hunt you down and consistently put you in a position where you may think that you're in control, but then later on penalize you after we get a couple of picks and death timers go up. And when that happens, that's when Heroes of the Storm gets really excited to me, when you switch the known strategies up and then punish your opponent for it. And Sky Temple is one of these that you're trying to make sure that you get to level 10, threaten your opponent, take the temples, get a forward advantage, and just keep playing and bouncing around that. And that's what I want to see 
uh, be brought here? What kind of strategies are we adjusting for both of our teams? Sky Temple is also a fantastic map for Abathur. Mule is a huge tool sure. to be able to deny some of the sustained pressure from the objective phasing. And as we get into the draft, I also always want to, I like to remind people here and there, if you're you know joining in, this is the meta madness style of draft, the heroes we saw in the previous game, no longer available, no Medivh, no Diablo, but we also hit a new goal today. So that's going to be more heroes also banned away. So it's Tahaka and uh, Lucio, Lucio, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, all here at the bottom of your screen actually pre-banned. They are all grayed out. They are unplayable. No, they did not die. They're just unplayable for the moment. Okay, we will be setting up into our draft here in a second and figuring out what will be banned out. We had a bit of a, a small uh, crush there, so we'll be right back in a second after we can reset up and get the draft going. So. In terms of what we've been seeing in trends, yes. Urel will constantly be banned out. Diablo was the main focus for the first couple of matches, but then it snuck through on game number two, and that was such a devastating tank. But here's the thing. Our tank choices are starting to get kind of low. Murden's going to be going up in priority here. Yes. I, I, I really do feel if Murden's not banned away early on, he's going to be a snap pick for this map. Also, we talk about this Liam targeted Urel ban, and, and I absolutely, you know, I keep saying don't give Liam Urel. But it is also awful or rough for Korea that it eats up a, a ban slot sure. every single draft. That you're you're always just you can't tactically ban. You're just target banning for one person. That's why first pick is so important right now because yeah. Hogger and Urel are the top laners. Period. Like yeah. one team is gonna have to say maybe we leave one open. But if you leave that open, uh, then obviously that becomes scary. So if you take those bans and keep moving further, that means Murden who's gone up in the draft. Now the tank is the strongest asset that you can pick up for our first pick. So yeah, it really comes down to, okay, do we want to stretch? And one of the best things you could do is you can be the person that's going for the fourth ban, and that's where you can pinch out your opponent and leave two OPs open. They only get one, you grab one, and then add a foundation to it. So that's where the drafting intelligence becomes really needed here for our teams. And so far, the upper hand in their matches has been going to the United States. First pick over United States as well. I do want to point that out. They were the winning team from the previous map, so South Korea is the one to choose Sky Temple. South Korea's got something planned for the map, and I'm just I'm I'm just staring. I'm waiting. What is this first game ban going to be from United States? Will they get rid of the Muradin? Play it a little bit later. It's going to be the Abathur, of course. Don't want to deal with the Mule. Don't want to deal with his split pressure. Mines are very annoying. I was it was yesterday actually during the South Korea versus France game. If I'm not mistaken, there was a Sky Temple, and it was just those the the mines that were constantly being yeah. placed everywhere, slowing down rotations. I. <laughs> I was doing the observing and I was I saw there was a mine and Rainer mounted right in front of it and then got dismounted instantaneously and I was just sitting in the back in production just giggling to myself like that's so annoying to And that's with. what you do it for. You, yeah. Speed is important at a high level of HOTS because the faster you get to your teammate and if you're there two or three seconds earlier that can be the difference in a team fight mm -hmm. and that with their mind slows that down. Uh, but that does scream to me on the United States though is they're not looking to try this like late game strategy with Abathur because they had the option here to go for a first pick for it if they wanted mm -hmm. to. Uh, they want to be playing a little bit more of a straight up match here, uh, which was a solid indicator, and I want to see what they'll be moving into. Uh, Anubrek's already been banned out, so Anubrek is actually a pretty big deal on Sky Temple. Um, he's banned out because he was played in game number one. Yeah. Uh, Karazim also being taken away, and that is a strong pickup for Hyde, but that also puts them in a situation here where they had to ban Urel or Murden. I wonder, would they be willing to pick first pick Murden? Isn't that weird to think about? A first pick Murden? I mean... Yes, but no, I, 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 I don't mind a first pick Murden. It doesn't show a ton of your draft. You're getting a solid tank. You're getting yeah. good CC. He's got mobility as well. He's got slows. And it's Left an it It's do, Urel? Do they snap it? Does Liam does Liam get his Urel immediately? Or is it going to be that Murden as we've been discussing? It all boils down to the plan, right? Yes, exactly. Like, what does the United States... Is Murden important for them? Or is he just more of like, hey, I like having this because we have the mobility, the way to jump into giant camps or merc camps and take it. Uh, Liam, you know what? You carry on him. If we lose Murden, we'll switch it up. And they decide to go for Urel. Cool. Like I'm, I'm happy with it personally. South Korea should be able to get their... Should be able to get the Murden if they want it. Hmm. I keep looking at the Kerosene band and I'm wondering, all right, where are we going to be going for healers? I'm, I'm racking my brain. There's White Mane, there's Ariel, Lili. Oh boy. And then and then my brain starts to just like, oh, what's left again? Morales is still available. Morales, yeah. Hey, yesterday. this is this is one of the best maps for Morales. Garrosh will be the tank instead here for KCB, and then we go into Great Main afterwards. That's mean. A lot of teeth. A lot of teeth in those first two. Oh, quite literally, actually. Uh, but a lot of aggression from those two characters from South Korea. Of course, though, 
Teeth and beards. Ever since Calder made that comment about beards now, I've just noticed everyone has beards in this game. Abathur has a beard, yeah. Yeah, he does. Kinda does. I'll agree with you on all these things. Everyone has beards. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Kaldor doesn't see Hogger not having a beard. That actually blew me away last I night. I didn't understand what humanoids are. Another uh, beard gets picked up, and uh -huh. there is Muradin. <laughs> Lenara to follow up as well. A great front line. This is a front line that's going to be hard to get past. Garrosh is going to be having a rough time into this. I actually think the United States feels pretty good about this draft so far. Righteous Hammer to push back Garrosh. If he indomitables, that's a very short self-cleanse. Murden can follow up with a Stormbolt or vice versa. Lunar's got a lot of mobility as well. Vision's a huge tool. Sentinel Wisp at level 1 is the average pickup for Lunara players, giving huge radius of vision. And a white main to be banned away. Don't want to deal with any of her Scarlet Aegis for the AoE buff onto allies for some armor. Though, from United States, I wonder if it's going to be more hide priority. Get rid of more healers that hide can't use. Of I course, mean, we're already getting to the bottom of the barrel here already, right? I wouldn't call Lily the bottom of the barrel. I would. <laughs> Absolutely. It's in a heartbeat. You were quick to snap onto that one. United States will take their time on this next ban, and it will round out to be a Zarya. The Garage Zarya has been very popular. We saw it earlier today uh, up against uh, Germany. Sweden was using it. Zarya also comes with the cleanses, which are yep. it, they're in rare demand right now, and they're on-demand cleanses uh, for both yourself and your uh, teammates whenever you lay on those shields. So good call there, especially with all the CC available for Murden and Urel. Uh, in terms of boss control, it looks pretty good here for the United States too. We are missing some DPS from them, Ooh. but they can get that later on in the draft. Yeah, what's up? I'd love a Falstead from either side, honestly. Like, Falstead works with either of these drafts on either side, but an Ana Artanis. So they're gonna round out something with a mage, I expect. I don't think this is gonna be a nano-boosted decimate Garrosh. That'd be, that's something that Justin would think of. Lastly, for United States though, they're gonna need that healer. You could go Morales and go Stim onto Lunara. That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, help out the auto attack. She's more of like, I take a, a while for the fight to unfold. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But still, uh, attack speed's always good, and you will need a healer. And then, of course, you can have Urel and and bounce back to you with a jump. It's going to be Orion okay. and Zeratul instead. Uh, I like the Zeratul pick here, because I was looking over at South Korea, and I'm like, they could technically still do like a Juice Pirates here. Like, Nana Boost Artan. Oh, no, this, yeah, absolutely. You, you, you go Morales, so you just dive into the back. Line I'm, I'm with you on it 100%. Zeratul is helpful with that, because if you need to change one thing that's good at stopping these all ins that happen on Sky Temple, is you VP the fort. And they can't touch it for five seconds, and then you have to the team rotate it in, you're good to go. Uh, so, Zeratul, one, brings in Wave Clear and allows for some assassinations, but also stops a cheesy strategy that we've seen in the past. Chin will be the final pickup here for South Korea. And okay. this is where the game gets fun, man. Game number three, we got some bruisers. We got a nice wolf here to chew through the back line, but I'm liking that front line here for the United States. I'm liking the front line United States. I said it yesterday. It didn't work out exactly, but I got faith in Cure Zeratul. I, I, as I said, I hung out with them last night. I hung out with them today. Their mentals are actually still really good. They, they had chats, like, literally the whole train ride last night, all the way back to the hotel. They were just talking about, like, okay, how can we adjust? This morning, they were talking about, okay, what do we feel comfortable on? And that was the conversation. Kira was saying, I'm feeling good on these characters today. This is what I'm going to be playing. So we're going to see Cure Zeratul. Should be able to pop off. I do, I will say this though, South Korea does have a fantastic draft, it's just, there's a lot of things on the side that I really much like for Sky Temple on the United States draft as well. It comes down to the first two temples, right? If South Korea is able to grab a good portion of them and take down a fort, right, and they get the lead, they're in a great spot to play the map. If you have your opponent trying to chase around and get on top of those temples, while Liam will be on Urel, it's only one target that can rotate well, Artanis, Greyman, they chew through forts, no problem. But it does come at the cost of trying to make sure that you're able to know where your opponents are at, and that comes with good macro, which we know South Korea is capable of. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty exciting match here for game number three. We are all tied up one to one. Let's do it. Into the match, US taking on South Korea. And on the blue side of Sky Temple, Legacy playing Ariel unaverted on that bearded Muradin, Cure on that bearded Zeratul, Liam on the bearded Urel, and we've got, of course, Lunara. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got beards as well. Yeah, Lunara to be played by Madara. To the far right, Hyde will be playing Ana, locked down on Chin, KCB on Garrosh, Kiri on Artanis, and Crow on Greymane. Go fight. All right, we get into the middle of the map here, and it's going to be fight over the vision. This is the most important thing on Sky Temple. If you don't have vision, you lose the game. It's a fact of life. And of course, South Korea got vision first, so GG, go next. That's how it be sometimes. Mm -hmm. Can't really fight it overall. 
Uh, we do have all four second up on the left, and Garrosh is in a position if anyone were to walk in there, even a Murden, he would toss him, and then Ana could follow it up into a sleep. And that's going to be the exciting thing to watch here. How will that front line handle the double meaty players on the opposing side of Yorel and Murden? And one way to help that is just stop those tanks or Yorel from getting the hard engages. So it comes down to hide and landing those sleep darts. Artanis? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I, was skin, I was skimming the level 1s, Artanis going reactive parry. Nothing nothing crazy to note. Actually, a Storm Stout recipe for the Chen. Not crazy out of the ordinary, it's typically freshest ingredients for that level 4 synergy. Maybe Chen going for a bit of a different build. Also, Biotic Grenade for Ana, but still, Biotic Grenade or Sleep Dart build is fairly standard for, for Ana players. I like the Storm Stout secret recipe uh, because it's a heal, right? Whenever you hit the abilities. Yep. Uh, Lenara takes her time to burn you down. And if you're Chen, you actually have relatively low cooldowns between your keg and the Fire Breath. Uh, so if you're landing those consistently, you don't really have to worry about healing, which means Ana can focus on Greymane, who needs those heals, because he will be in situations where, yeah, he's putting out good damage, but if any damage is hitting him, he has to back away. And you don't want Greymane back away from fight. You don't want him to become a Fuzzy Rainer. That is the worst. You never want a Fuzzy Rainer on your team. You want that aggression, and Ana with the Shrike mode should be able to provide enough distance healing as well. Biotic grenade for denial onto the enemy. Blade dashes, good swap onto Cure, but he's got the blink and out of there. Both teams will also grab their Fallen Sh Ooh, not Fallen Shum, the Bruiser Camps. They're holding because they want to be the second one. They want to be the later one out. I like this. If you let the enemy team hard camp crash into your gate first, you have that gate to be able to provide some extra demolition to the wave, and then your wave can come out afterwards and you get the counter siege. A little bit of a tactic that NA is going to try out here. KCB gets a huge toss on Unaverted. Dwarf toss away. Little detainment strike onto lockdown. But these two waves will crash in front of the gate. There's that dis there's that little bit of hold. Still, sustained damage from Crow and friends into this front gate, and this is huge. Trick, this top lane push is always important because of the first objective being top and bottom, or top and mid, and top shoots top. If South Korea can control top lane objective. They're going to get this entire fort right now. Yeah, this is the issue with the United States draft. It's just Lenara takes forever to ramp up, and so does Zeratul as well. He wants Bet, to move yeah. to his 13 and 16 talents. And so I would argue this night camp was a necessity that they had to make as a play. It was the right answer to handle South Korea's aggression just because of the front loaded damage that's available from Grey Main. Uh, the fight continues to brew out here. Like, look at Matara. He's been hitting lockdown this entire time, and while Anna's been helping out the heals, that level one talent has allowed for him to stay darn near full health while the mana has burned through here for Lenara. So, bit of an issue that they're going to have to work their way through. Liam, however, starting to work on that temple on the middle phase here. Able to handle Garish all by himself. There is an Ario coming in for the rotation. Uh, it's so weird to say an Ario coming in for the flank, <laughs> but that's exactly what was happening there. Also, I want to point out Chen going into that Withering Flame level 4, 60% spell power reduction. That reduces healing, that could reduce Zera tool spell power, which is a big bursting factor. We'll have to keep an eye on how that's utilized throughout the game, but seven talents here, almost here. Chen will hold top lane, that top lane fort dropping around 50%. Mid lane shots going out. South Korea controlling both objectives and finding tons of value. Can the United States do anything? As a note as well, if opposing players are stepping on the point, it cancels out, no shots will be had at that time. Something to note, change here for Artanis at level four, getting that psionic synergy. Yeah. Uh, which means whenever he hits that warp prism on a target, he'll get armor for five seconds, just making him that much more tankier. And this usually isn't the greatest pickup if you're ever dealing with some front-loaded damage, but because that warp prism is going to be up consistently uh, before Lenar can burn through you, you're going to be in a great spot where you're able to tank on that front line. So a nice change up by him based on what the comp is from the United States due to the, all the brawling that will occur. Speaking of brawling, Brandon was looking a little shaken there, getting tossed around by KCB, but he's able to get the dwarf toss out. Chen flying, kicking away, no big deal. Meanwhile, Zeratul Artanis will pick up Soak in the mid lane for the allies. Both Siege Giant camps are up and available, and Tens are two levels away. The longer this goes on, mm -hmm. the United States slightly gets stronger. But South Korea has put themselves in a great position here to be in a solid spot moving into the second temple. That fort to the top left has gotten to a point where it's a thorn in the side of the United States. They're going to have to protect it, which means they're going to consistently put up Urel probably in that area. And if you keep Urel busy, especially Liam's Urel, you don't have to worry about it in the team fight. So I like this early aggression. And now all they have to do is keep an eye on the Merc cams and build towards that uh, level 10 and win on the temple phase on the bottom side. And then they can try to snowball. I like the positioning here as they continue to consider the strength of the United States later on. 
Also, Detainment Strike picking up. It's full Biotic Grenade build for Ana, actually. Usually it's a, a little bit here and there, a Sleep Dart talent, but or de, uh, the level 4 that I can never properly pronounce. But it's full, it's full Biotic Grenade, so looking for as much Healing Denial Amplification. Well, Healing Denial to enemy and Amplification to allies as well, but the 10 talent here, as we mentioned, very soon to come up. Bottom lane Temple as well. We'll see this contested with the 10s on both sides, should be a really fun fight. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, these fights are going to be long and drawn out, aside from Yorel knocking someone out of position. So, Ana, if she plays safe, should be able to keep those heals up and sustain through. Now, we do have Artanis 1v2-ing in the middle, but Lockdown comes in to make it a fair 2v2. Kira teleporting away. Kiri has to swap in a second. However, Kira is able to get away. There's no way. Oh, wait a minute. The toss from Garrosh into an E, and Kira gets picked off. Great teamwork there from South Korea, and first blood heads over to them. Keg gets popped there. Looks like it was unable to connect where it wanted to. But this is a great time for this kill. Temple, now available. This is the bottom side, and they have a 5v4 advantage. It's going to be a 4v4 right now, because Artanis is eluded to stay on the top lane and work on that temple instead. Liam will catch Soak in mid. Lunara moving Wisp for some extra vision. Lockdown being delayed out by Unaverted, who has to Dwarf Toss over the wall just to back away. Taps well. We'll be able to get that healing over time. Fairly standard heroics across the board. Ana is holding 10. I doubt we see Eye of Horus, but you just never know. Indomitable from Garrosh. He gets a huge Warlord Shedge, but where's the team to help out? Down goes Garrosh. And honestly, Garrosh is, is pretty darn tanky, but sometimes you can be surprised at how quickly he can be deleted there. Oh, and yeah. that was a showcase of where that happens. Matara, able to help out his teammates with that leaping strike, burn him down, and find the kill. Now we're in a position where Zeratul was able to defend that top lane, but the fort did get taken down, so Artans wants to rotate, see if he can find a swap here. But I have fear for South Korea, because the United States is in a great position for a flank. Crow in trouble, he goes in for the bait for the kill, and United States just pops him. Meanwhile, Unaverted Low still hasn't used I Avatar. Have uh, uh, oh, I, Keg is pushing back Legacy, but it's slowing things down. Cure get an, got an auto attack, I think, right? Oh, here comes Liam, and that's a cleanup onto Chen. It's a very quick, maybe a triple kill. Garrosh just got back. The Eye of Horus is keeping Hyde in place. Ardent Defender, this is so smart. Tanking tower. Oh, no, it's, well, it's not going to work. Gonna, Hang on, I, I was saying here. Ardent Defender with the tower shots was working out for Liam. He's tanking again. He will fall. And the last few temple shots will confirm the bottom lane fort. No, I gotta stop saying that because that's the second time this map I was like, oh, it's going down. Yeah, nope. That's close. I'll give it to you. Thank uh, you. Shout out to Legacy, though. Legacy was doing his best to keep Liam alive. And even if Liam did eventually get killed off there, they bought so much time that South Korea was trying to defend that fort to where we saw Madara move over and grab the temple and get the shots there on that temple on the bottom right. So Legacy doing a great job keeping his teammate alive, even tanking some of those shots just to make sure he can kite on back. And now we're in a situation where 13 is right around the corner for both our teams, but effectively, aside from that fort having a few HP, <laughs> we are incredibly close right now. And this is a great spot for the United States. These talents that we were talking about earlier, level 13s and level 16, are about to connect. And that is great for US. South Korea on the other hand, starting to showcase what they're trying to do. They're going to let Chin, Greyman, and Artanis just get into that front line, and Ana's going to play as safe as possible, bring out the Eye of Horus, and all they have to do is delete one member, and they'll feel pretty good about a team fight. Level 13s, by the way. Oh, no, let's hold that thought. Blind Eye from of the Horus? Artanis suppression pulse. The Eye of Horus is keeping him alive for a moment. The shielding does come through. Unaverted with a Stormbolt to the face. Crow jumping onto Madara. Unaverted's now the one in a bad spot. Has to pop the Avatar. Meanwhile, Kier said, oh, you're standing still. Let me try and find a kill onto you. Kiri, I, how is it? Oh, <laughs> no, the Nexus forces are too OP. The Giants were able to get the shot there. He heads up play by Kier. Oh, my God, Hyde curly to 1v1 to Kier, and Hyde gets the kill. Greymane did help out earlier, but we're going to no give respect. that to Hyde. My golly G, well played by him. So he did get all five shots with the IF Wars on Artanis. It did keep him alive, aside from those Giants coming in and get the kill, and that's what the plan is. Let Artanis go deep, and if you can keep Artanis in a spot where he's getting heals, he will eventually win out those trades thanks to all his shields if you are able to to stop all the CC from coming in. But this brawl right now on Sky Temple has been massive for both our teams. Four kills for US, three for South Korea, and with Temple's activating soon, hey, let's get a look at this here. The IR Horse just finished up. They turn around the fight. Cure trying to get rid of high because he wanted to stop that IF horse from happening. And then we did have uh, a little bit of damage coming in on that top side with Chen coming in. And then afterwards, we'll get a quick look at Ana finishing off this kill because they went for the sleep dart and Kier had to dodge it and Hyde read that perfectly, landed up with the nade and gave a couple of auto attacks. That was an awesome replay. That was a really cool looking replay right there. I didn't yeah, even know that was coming. Hell yeah. Heck yeah, man.
Temples. Wait, wait, wait. Mid, mid. Oh, I, I see Zeratul blinking in. Yes, Zeratul is going in, but Lunara's the one to fall a little too deep, and Hyde walks away with some damage over time. Cure, he wants it, and Cure will get the counter kill. Finally gets a counter kill. It's a one for one trade, but their main damage dealer of Lunara is missing during a temple phase. And look to the top lane. During all of that, Shen was grabbing a temple, and it's starting to seize that fort in the bottom side. Finally, Unaverted rotates to the bottom lane and starts grabbing that temple as well. And it looks like we're going to have middle forts traded out. This is neck and neck at the moment. What a great series. Fantastic Sky Temple between both these teams. Really good back and forth as Artanis will have a little PvP action here between him and Zeratul. Ariel helping out. Here comes Urel with a Righteous Hammer. Armor. Nice self-cleanse with the swap from Artanis. He'll be tossed out by Garrosh, but Urel still wants it and Liam will find it. It's actually, it's gonna be Legacy who snipes the kill. This Liam factor is just so much. Every time I see it, man, I just don't know what to do about it. He always has his Goomba stops at the right time to yep. go in for a kill. Now, there was a camp that was grabbed to the top right. Shen pushed that all the way in, and it's starting to work on that keep. Boss call from the United States, as they know Artanis is currently missing. However, Lockdown does have that keg, and remember, you're unstoppable uh -oh. during it. Oh, no. Bay have revealed himself a little bit too early, forced to use the keg, pushing Legacy to the right side, getting to his teammates. KCB will be there to help out. Kier on the back line working on the Giants, just trying to pull them away from this boss, pinching them into a weird corner. Kier keeps autoing because of his level one. He wants that cooldown reduction on his blink, so he'll take little autos here and there. But here comes the fight on the boss. Liam has it. KCB can't steal it away. Kier will fall, but Garrosh is traded. Now here is an Avenging Wrath into the Ana, and she does fall. Chen going to try and fly and kick away. He might try and drink through the pain. I don't think he can drink that much, Chen. Sorry, bud. Lockdown, going to be locked out. South Korea just never really gives away anybody and lets them die off. He's trying to go in the fights, and the United States is completely prevailing because of it. They have the number advantages, yet the, all these melee boys keep running themselves into a fight. I gotta be critical here. I'm not sure why South Korea tried to fight that after Wandering Keg was done. I How do you steal away that boss fight? How, how, you don't. You don't you, I'm sorry, you don't. You don't take that. Or I may be gold, but I know you don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a bit of an interesting decision by them. And with that, because of the play, Kier made so much pressure happen on the right side. Sure, he did die. That forced the carries to go over and deal with him and Ana as well. United States take the boss easily and they take out the keep. And now United States is in a commanding league all because lockdown came down too early and wasted his keg. I do like the call of what United States did here. Instead of saying, let's all run at the core, we can end it now, Cure reset, went back, cleared out top lane, got rid of the consistent catapult pressure, the rest of the team got a keep, they now have a win condition through bottom lane, a whole structure's down, only two keeps remain on the side of South Korea. There are three structures for United States, but there's just one fort in bottom, top lane keep has fallen. Double temple phase will be coming up, and now Muradin, Brandon in the bottom lane, you, you and Kaldor talked about this last night. This is the point where you don't want to be passively trading these because North America, United States, will be winning out since they have more structures. Yeah, I mean, if you keep one to one everything, eventually you run out of the one, right? Because you have yeah. three versus two. Like, exactly. It, That's why I was, I was noting how many structures, yeah. It's simple maths, man. You can just do it on your it's fingers. It's hard to do when you're casting, honestly. It's it crazy. Can be. It can be. <laughs> 20 is right around the corner for the United States, but they are content just soaking the map. You have your rail on the top side who has showcased multiple times that she's willing to escape and can get away from a lot of fights, especially with Liam driving her. Uh, and at the same time, South Korea is sniffing around in the middle seeing, hey, maybe someone will overstep, maybe we can find a pick, uh, but that is just not happening. USO close to level 20, Kier goes in, gets a little bit of harassment in, Temples finally do siege on the middle side, and that keep in the middle, look at that, down to less than about a quarter HP. It is bare and ready to be picked off, and with the United States marching down the middle lane, that could be their next target. Wisps, I think, was to check out, yeah, United States looking to invade this camp, and I think they I think South Korea has to give this, especially without their 20 talent here that United States just rolled into. Is that Hippity Hop at level 20 for Madara? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the activatable speed boost for Lunar at level 20? Yeah, Galloping Gain. Galloping Gain, excuse me. Hippity Hop is at level 1. I like yours more. It's nice. <laughs> sound. Uh, Kira on the backside is continuing the poke, and all to do is be careful and not die off here. I don't mind these pokes at all. I don't uh, either. Main focus here is to open up this wall. Even if you don't get the keep, at least the next temple shots, but they are grabbed, will hit it. Kira in mid. He's getting a keep on his own. Greymane will try and have the 1v1, but Crow has to clear out the wave. Actually, no, Crow's got to go back to top, but Crow's so caught between. Where do I go? Do I need to defend against Kier? Do I need to defend against top? Right now, everyone from the United States hovering around mid. If they can confirm a second keep, this will be big. Kier fishing around in the bottom, and Yurel with the self-cleanse. 
Well, one thing will happen if South Korea can get to 20, Blunderbuss comes on, which helps out the Very DPS good. of Grey yeah. Main, starts setting them up for that go for the throat kills, which if you can get one or two resets, then suddenly you are going to start marching down the map, and then you can go straight for a core rush in the top lane, but they have to hold out. They're 25% away from that level 20. I think damage over time took down the keep, actually. Sure did. All right. <laughs> good old poisons. Okay. South Korea is on one core and one keep, and that is the only thing standing on the uh, side of their fence here if they want to get that victory. One temple will spawn in the middle, but you have a Zeratul roaming who can push out lanes. You have a Rel that's been pushing out lanes the entire time. All we need from the United States is for Muradin, Ariel, and Lenar to chill. Back door. I don't think they go for the back door, but you do pull them away from the temple. Or is Cure just pro oh, Cure might be just proxying waves, so his just keeps crashing in faster. Yep. I like this. I love this. He's he's playing a global Zera tool in a sense. And the team is Zera <laughs> grabbing the Giants in case they do need to fight and help him get away. But it's all about positioning here. You just want to pull them away, get to the temple. South Korea knows they can't give this up, so here they are. It's 4v4. Chen's at the core defending against Zera tool. And Zera oh my god, Zera is dropping the Ken quite Chen quite quickly, but there's a fight over here that's gonna break out. Huge jump in from Liam. Garrosh with a groundbreaker. Chen? Chen's down to like 600 HP. The Eye of Horus will be forced from Ana. Kyr trying to dip dive and dodge around. Can he actually get away? The tower shots are a lot. Kyr, I don't, oh, oh. Nexus forces again, a little too OP OP. But over back at the temple trick, there's a very low Artanis, but a huge Warlord challenge. A full 4v4 happening here. Artanis, however, is really strong in this scenario as he has that armor if he's able to keep hitting those war prisms and he will get the temple and that gives Chen time to clear out the bottom wave. Kier maybe a little bit too aggressive on that bottom side, and now you start wondering, South Korea has to make a play, right? Do they yeah. start looking at that boss? That boss is open and available for the next 40 seconds. They can have all five. Chen working on clearing out that wave too, finally gets some time to heal on up, and he will have his keg back up in six seconds, so they can force and secure it. This is the tense moment. Was that was that too much? We're taking a look at the boss, but I do believe we got a replay coming up. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I want that replay. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and check it out real quick. Let's see what's going on. Kier was on the backside, and Shen was doing everything he can here to lock him down, and finally gets killed off by the keep. That boss is still being grabbed in that bottom right corner. Let's go ahead and head over to it, because that is a very, very important time right now. Our Tans is focusing down. Okay, they get the boss. Now, the question is, do you push with the boss, or was it just enough to take it off the map? I feel it. Well, so Lockdown's hard thing back, because there's a lot in bottom lane. Yeah. You've got Greymane on our Tannis Garrosh. You could push this, but it's I think this is just supplemental pressure in the bottom lane. Oh man. It's hard because like this is Sky Temple, right? You're like right. if you wait for the temple phase and you, you mess up a team fight or Zeratil sneaks on by, you're kinda screwed over. So you have to like decide, do I wanna go for a full push? But like after that Zeratul I uh, wish I wish Kier left faster. I wish he I wish he disengaged, I, ran to the fight. I think if we ask Kier, he'll be like, "That was an end." I yeah, I, 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 think so, I think so too. I think so too. I, I think we ask. Little, like, little mis little misjudgment on on his own playability. But at this level, right, those small things add exactly. up. Exactly. We've had two of them in this game that in particular were huge, and that was a keg, and then of course Zeratul the dying. All right, Yorel Dominable. finds a Garrosh, and Dominal keeps him alive. He is slow. Oh God! Oh, that damage! Woo! Garrosh is deleted here. Rewind for Muradin. He's looking for Ana. Hyde is trying to back away. Cure coming back in, looking for revenge. That is Artanis shredded by Lunara's damage. Well, he's not dead just yet, but he will fall in Hyde. one or two more auto attacks. Hyde eventually. trying to keep him alive. Keep up the heals, and Artanis last for a decent time here, but now there's only three people left here for South Korea, and they have to defend. Hyde finally gets sniped. United States diving this keep here in the top right corner, and with all five members up, they can easily take this keep and start moving in for a core. Back left, though, Crow trying to make his mark on the map here, going in for Aria, detainment strike, and a peeling Urel, the blunderbuss, almost in the hit, but Liam, smarter than that, hugs up on that body, yeah. and Gray made it down a weird 1v2, but over on the core, it's starting to fall in HP. Aegis comes out, just playing with their fool, but look at this core down to 30 down to 10 and that is going to be gg a wild game here on sky temple and the united states goes up two to one that was a great back and forth it was looking like opportunities for korea were starting to pop up towards the end of the game and i will say this i will say this bluntly it's a little over aggression like i i kept saying to na i was like i want you guys to be aggressive sure. that's a little too aggressive pull it back a little bit i i, I mean it it's one of those situations where you're in the heat of the moment, right? And Chen's, oh, oh, Chen's a weird character to play into, right? Zeratul yes. feels like, all right, I have all these maneuvers. I should be able to outplay them. And then suddenly that wandering keg came in there. And then the sandstorm part, it became yep. an issue. Uh, my, but You're like, still tanking core shots too. Yeah, it's such a high level of Heroes of the Storm that it's just we can be very, very critical. But it's hard in the moment to see that. Absolutely. And I think also Sky Temple kind of lends itself to these weird moments because of how the map plays out uh, with the Temple sieging down forts for essentially free, right? Like you don't have to do too 
too much about it. Uh, so I, I like the adjustments on both teams here, but man, they're it, stressing me out. My heart, it's beaten. Really? Yeah, it's beaten. Oh, okay, well. I was I was cast on like this. <laughs> <laughs> My face was in this monitor here. It was, it was seriously, it was such a good, it was good tension, really, really good map number three, but this is this is a best of five, so we're yeah. not we're not done. Of course, we still have potentially two more maps. NA needs to win one more map to progress in the lower bracket to face up against Sweden. Correct? Correct. Yeah, and they'll be playing for the grand final. And then so. the grand finals will be up against Germany. That's right. And whoever loses today will or loses this match will be they're out. They're out of the tournament. We send them right to the airport. They don't actually get to watch the rest of the tournament. I mean, let's go take a look at the bracket here real quick and get an idea of how this tournament has unfolded so far. As we started with, uh, uh, gosh, a great candidate of teams. We had four European teams, one from North America, and then, of course, one from South Korea as well. Germany is 9-0 and in this entire tournament so far. United States has had a bit of a bumpy row, but so has South Korea. They were able to take out France in that bottom bracket, United States 3 0 Poland, and now you can see both of these players or teams currently just going to the wire as U.S. is up 2-1, to one, hoping to secure this victory and then, of course, go forward to face off against Sweden. All right. You, you've been around here as a storm for like one to two years, maybe, Trixler? Yeah, a couple you know, years. Just a couple years. Yeah, floating around. I always like to ask this because there's a, everyone has different mentals, different ways they look at the game. If you're Korea, what do you, what do you, what would you adjust? How would you mentally go into the into this game number four? Do you play? All right, let's play some comforts. Let's just have some fun. How do you approach this next game? Uh, it's hard because of how this tournament works. Right? Exactly, exactly. So when it comes to South Korea, they've always been very effective at being in your face and finding kills, right? Uh, and they have adjusted at being perfectionists. But when you're being stretched in across a roster that it gets larger, you have to piece together these weird hero compositions that make mm -hmm. them effective. And Korea's always been very good at lightning fast reflexes, right? So that's why Genji, Tracer, Maya, these characters that make these quick decisions, they just deliver on and they follow up really well. Uh, so... Going to the next couple of matches, suddenly you are starting to play Cassia, right? Which is a little bit on a different side compared to those right. elements. So it's either they've had to put the practice in and be good to go, or they start to crumble a little bit. And that's why it's so exciting to watch this series, because is the United States more prepared than South Korea when it comes to a roster over the span of Heroes of the Storm? Mm, that, that, that is, that's, a, that's the important part to consider. Like, I... I don't really 100% know what Korea wants to do. That that like, cause that's where I'm looking at it too. It's like, how does Korea want to adjust and have their hero pools been limited more? Like, has this has this limited their their hero pools so much that now they're kind of back against the wall? I mean, look at yourself, right? Like, if you were forced to play. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I'm> just, <laughs> nice, good job. Uh, you can just look at the, the monitor here. There you go. Oh, I'm uh, right there. There you go. Uh, if you were forced to play off your comfort picks, how would you feel? Would you feel lost? Would you feel a little confused? Would you be like, I'm ready to go, right? Like, it's... I think for me, I mean, everyone's different. For yeah. me, it's one of those, if it's this team setting, it's it's like, I'm on I'm on something I might not be the most confident with, but we're all in we're all in this together. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. See, that's what it comes down to. You rely on your team. And yeah, exactly. And it's you gotta out. you may be you may be playing like let's say you you've played a hundred games on Cassie. It's not your strongest, but you understand the it's mechanics. margin of error, right? And so it's like, but other people on your team are still weak. You you work together. You rally, and I think that's the big mentality. Like the mentality is always the thing that I always like to consider going into these game fours. You gotta treat it like okay, it's just one map at a time. It is a best of five, but one map at a time. We find what works for us, and we and we nail that down. And well, Trick, we've got a lobby, we've got a map, and we can continue talking about our draft ideas for what map? Cursed Hollow. Ooh. This is a map that Zarya might pop up. We had her banned earlier, actually, yes. but Zarya is becoming a, a bit of a main focus in this tournament. Uh, I wouldn't, I would say at day one she was a surprise, and now she's almost mandatory, right, with the cleanses that are available mm -hmm. for her. So uh, she could pop up here. We've talked about it in the past. The ability to get the boss here can be game ending early. There is no Savas available. That's usually what you use to end it. But still, with a curse and a push, you have no forts being returned, and you have a hard engage. That happens, you find one or two kills, and next thing you know, you're snowballing into a core. So that's something that has to be considered here for Kristallo. 
There is also, you mentioned the Zarya, the hyper carry factor. I've, I've seen a lot of teams, they go for that Zarya. She's a support because we recategorize things in Heroes of Storm, to, you know, support and healers. So we've got Zarya for support, and then you pick up a healer as well, get like a hyper carry Vala, which is still up and available. And I do like the idea of maybe auto attack based Vala. You get to level 16, you get Manticore, you start shredding through health pools. That feels like a very South Korea draft, that aggression, that constant stepping in and looking to beat up the enemy enemy team. That's what I'd really like to see from South Korea here. Go for that consistent aggression, sustain damage, whittle them down, get sustained wins, actually. That's sustained victories throughout. Cursed Hollow is what I'd like to see from South Korea. United States, they're the ones who understand how to make these weird drafts work for sure. Yeah. I'm just excited to see what they'll, they'll pull out for this map because as we had mentioned, the hero pools are starting to dwindle. Yeah, you're going to start focusing on what has good pairings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which can be... Like Arthas, cheese and bread? Yeah, like <laughs> cheese and bread, yeah. Like Arthas Kerrigan, suddenly an old but good combination now because you're down to game number four. You mentioned Vala. Malfurion is up available. He was banned earlier. Tracer's Malfurion's still up if she's not banned. <laughs> Malfurion's good for Tracer. Malfurion's good for Jaina. Malfurion's good for Vala to the point where Malfurion might be a mainstay ban now just to make sure that you stay away from those two. Or you first pick it away. Uh, your mind has to be racing right now when it comes to these drafts. What can I take to get a slight advantage over my opponents and pin them against the wall? Once again, I do want to note this as well. First pick will be going over the side in the United States. South Korea opting for map pick priority here. They've done that now, what, three times? I do believe so. Yeah. So, Karazim actually banned away. I'm just getting rid of it. Yeah, it works out actually really They might just wrong. not want to go to Braxis Holdout, honestly. Like, if BOE was banned out, as you mentioned, they might just not want to go to Braxis, and that's why they keep picking the maps. Uh, so Tracer does get banned away. Is this an early Malfurion to take it from Hyde on the United States side? Or are they going to look for a strong tank? I doubt they start out with Kerrigan, but it would be fun. Yeah, Kerrigan doesn't really have any major advantages on this map, so I agree with you. A first pick Kerrigan would be <laughs> really awkward, uh, and they would have to have a strategy set up for it, right? It's Malfurion, cool. Yeah. So they take away an I like, element. I, I like the aggression of her. You get a lot of good team fights, Ultra List to be summoned, get that stun into the face. Sure. Even Maelstrom, with all the clustered fights around objective phasings, can be very useful. There's double bosses as well that we got to consider. So some sort of auto attacker that can shred through the bosses will be important as well. So now South Korea needs to show their response. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Stitches. There is no Medivh for the cheese. Toronto's up. But this is another form of what Stitches oh. was back in the day. You pick Stitches, get a Gorge, and you Mighty Gust everyone else yep. away, and then focus the target. I like this a lot. How will the United States slow down the Stitches beyond a Malfurion? Gotta find some sort of point-click CC. Maybe a Varian charges in, goes for a taunt, slows down the Stitches from disengaging. But of course, Falstead still has that Gust, as you mentioned. Yeah. And that sh it's a 60-second cooldown. That's very low. You should be able to Gust every time there's a Gorge unless it's forced out. Malganis for the Night Rush. So you put Falstad to sleep, and Illidan just hunts Falstad. I guess you just kill Falstad and let the Gorge target die. Yeah, I mean, you could, <laughs> even, you could even just hunt Stitches just to lock him down and make him spit yep. out a target, right? Uh, but now we have a lot more brawling available for the United States. Uh, I would like to see... Oh, gosh. Jaina might be worth it for them here. South Korea should be thinking about it, Jaina, because uh, of how Malfurion can help out yeah. with the fight, and then it's a nice thing to kite back into. It's also, Illidan. you can drop a blizzard, a ring of frost off the mm -hmm. gorge target as well. It'd work really good for uh, South Korea. Okay, let's see what this ban's gonna be here for US. Taronda, maybe? I'd be leaning, to, if I was the banner for United States, I'd be leaning Taronda. We don't need the healer. Taronda synergizes with Stitches for the Lunar Flare after the gorge or the hook even. Yeah, just a hook into Lunar Flare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huntress Mark is a great way to amplify Falstead's burst ability onto that target, but it's gonna be White Mane. Okay, South Korea. What do you got? I would love to see Hyde on Toronto. That'd Gosh. be really cool. I love a good Toronto game. And the Owls are so helpful, too, because Curse Hall is all about, okay, we know our opponents are on the opposite side of the boss. Let's go ahead and split the map. We'll grab the boss top right, right? And Toronto just kind of builds into that and gives you that information that you need to make the correct plays. Sent Sentinels to check around the map as well are huge. Be able to know, all right, we're going to go boss. Are they on their boss so we can trade timings? Or if they're not on their boss, maybe we invade or try and find something. So there it is. And an ETC as well. I'm expecting this to be a solo lane ETC. He's got a lot of solo lane talents that are great for clearing waves. Stage dive is an option. I don't 
I don't think we're going to be seeing a mosh pit. I like a stage dive, honestly. I mean, mosh pit is always strong just to keep. Uh, it keeps Malganos at bay, too, after he uses a couple of big cooldowns. But yeah, I, I would love to see stage dive. This also just kind of stops Illidan in its tracks. Sure, the wave clear isn't as good, but ETC has a hard time dying to Illidan unless you're just not respecting him at all. Also, ETC's level one block party gives block stacks to the allies, but a Madara Chromie comes out and Liam's Deathwing. Can't hook a Deathwing, and he's really good at bop. Deathwing is actually considered a great counter into Stitches, if so he can body block the hooks because you can't you can't pull a Deathwing. He's too big. Yeah, fascinating draft here. Wow. How Good cool response from the United States. This is like the Illidan's really cool. The Malganus, I'm I'm wishy washy on it, but we're limited on tanks and we'll see how it works out for them. Carrion Swarm's a good way. Uh, I wouldn't say panic button, but it's a good counter moment and a Cassia rounds out the draft for the side of South Korea. Blinds into Illidan are always nice. Yeah, I feel like that Illidan brought up Cassia. Because mm -hmm. I think we would have seen something like Jaina, something with Wave Clear or anything to help out with the control. But uh, Cassia, helpful with that. Uh, especially if you can kite backwards enough to deal with it, you get that armor block up. What an interesting draft. What do you think? Malfurion, Innervating, Chromie, the Time Traps. I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping for a Horl Anomaly at level four, well, 2, 4, whatever you want to call it, for Chromie. That gives you more traps available. That's just more vision tools as well. Helps around bosses too. Exactly. And then... I like the United States draft. I think they got the momentum, but the stitches is kind of an X factor for me. I Means the false dead. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Global capabilities that's and true. also being able to decide on the fights that you want, and then if you don't like it, you just reset for a cooldown that's like yeah. what sixty seconds, if yep. I remember correctly. Um, so false dead, that global factor just means a lot here. And Deathwing is okay in terms of going into globals. He's just more delayed, and you have to be very proactive on how you want to react to it. Uh, so that small window can give Falstead a lot. The only issue is that Illidan Hunt makes it to where Falstead can't be aggressive. So I see this Falstead as more of a defensive play. I'm also wondering what direction Falstead's going to go in his build. Will he go auto attack build to... Because it was picked up before the Deathwing, but will he change into an auto attack build to look for... Yeah, sure. Burst damage into Deathwing, or is it going to be burst damage from the hammering? We're going to find out here on map number four. Cursed Hollow on the left-hand side. We've got United States Cure playing Illidan. Liam on Deathwing. Legacy playing Malfurion. Unaverted on Malganus. And last but not least, time shifting into the map. Madara on Chromie. To the far right. Look in the type of series or get knocked out of the tournament. It is South Korea. KCB on Stitches, Lockdown on Falstad, Hyde on Taronda, Kiri on ETC, and Crow playing Cassia. Prog Rock is the talent for ETC. One of my favorite talents uh, on him. Being able to grab a region globes, you'll eventually get to a point where you're kiting with your teammates mm -hmm. and healing them up as you move around. Which, to be fair, Toronto will need that healing. Uh, help out as she's pretty solid in terms of killing and getting those lunar flares, but in terms of healing, her numbers can start to suffer and are actually relatively li high cooldowns if you can't get your auto attacks in. So the little funny thing at the start, Madara used Time Walker's Pursuit to scout out the fort, the keep front gate up against South Korea. Time Walker's Pursuit reveals an area for four seconds. If it reveals an enemy, it will continue to reveal just the enemy for an additional four seconds. That flight of false set into mid lane, United States knew the entire time. They split off into their respective lanes. No mid lane brawl. Love this little bit of tech that we saw from Madara. Information is key in a MOBA. Uh, it sure is. Kyrie and Deathwing on the top side. Liam's not going to be able to do too much against ETC. Uh, he will be able to probably take away the globes. Actually, one of the great benefits of playing ETC in a side lane is that you have that knockback ability. So you can deny region globes from your opponent. But Deathwing. He don't move. Seed, so he don't move. He just walks up and takes it. So that'll be a fun lane for both of those overall. And we have the Illidan game. Immediately straight to the night camps with South Korea is answering with their own on the middle side. Toronto scouting this out consistently. Hyde will probably use these Sentinels off cooldown. And Madara may be doing the same thing as well with the Time Walker's Pursuit. Both of them saying hello to each other. Hyde will check and see. All right. No one's on that Siege Giant camp. So... We can, we'll rotate to our own. Uh, also to note, first objective phase will be bottom center of the map. Siege Giants are better for the United States since there'll be that off lane pressure far away from objective phasing. <laughs> Cute little maneuver there. Kira actually let this minion wave come in so the Night Camp will push in and they can use it defensively like yep. saw the last time. But Toronto was just nailing L's on him and eventually got low. KCB um, was rotating in to help here and that man is stuck in a corner. The United States draw first blood. 
Lockdown was stopped by a time trap of Chromie. I got a little worried for him, but it's not that big of a deal. And as you mentioned, that camp from the side of United States was delayed a little bit. Now it's in the lane, pushing things out, and United States has aggression in the mid lane of their own. They want to open up the map here. With false out and potentially that ETC stage dive that is becoming in their way, South Korea will be able to pick and choose what fights they want to go for. And one of the best ways to diminish that is to open up the map yourselves and make sure they're stuck behind their keeps, right? So killing off these forts is a great way to do that. So United States grouped up heavily in the middle lane to find that kill and are now using this night camp to open up in a gate, which will set up curse play later on. Just peeking into the top lane, I think it's the Illidan versus ETC. And Illidan, Kyr, he's fine. He's just harassing Kiri. Over down and bottom, it's Falstead up against Deathwing. Also to note, Falstead did go into the Gathering Storm at level 1, building up that hammering damage. The expectation is going to be Boomerang at level 7 for the additional spell armor reduction, reduction and the increase in uh, explosion damage on the hammering as well. First objective is up and available. It's been up for about 10 seconds. Neither team going for a channel. It's Hyde looking for it right now. Unaverted using a few fell claws to check the bush. There's a time trap right, before, right behind Hyde. Not going to be activated, just getting some vision as Stitches walks right through it. Love that boomerang. Uh, Gathering the storm. It's really good against Illidan. So much fun. You get the damage popped up, yeah. you can kind of burst him before he moves into you and also provide a slow to kind of help him not run you down, which will help out Cassia. You have a lower Illidan. Cassia can time out her attacks when that evasion is down. This is becoming a very difficult tribute to grab. And it seems like Falstad's agreed lockdown will fly into mid lane. Yeah. Just keep soaking. But that is a numbers advantage fight to United Lunar States. And they're going to look to step in here. Fellclaw's Night Rush puts a couple feet, couple everyone to sleep. Deathwing with the death drops as well. The Skyfall. Liam could join in this fight and make it a 4v3. I don't talk about legacy much, man, but this guy is such a good rock for the United States. Then he's just curious. Oh, he's he's one perfect. of my favorite heal healers to watch nowadays. He is just He's such a thing. solid player. KCB low on HP. Lenara is actually sleeping, so she can't heal. And by Lenara, I mean Taronda. Crow, however, will answer back with a kill and big grinds drop, it. Drop. Deathwing drops in, chasing down Lockdown, is trying to retreat. Hide, now able. Turn and around, fight some heals. He's in destroyer form, getting those onslaughts and incinerates around him. Crow trying to get the last little bit of damage to Unaverted, but Legacy's got the heal. And will body block some of the damage and also body block the death. But Falstad's traded. Chromie just responded. Meanwhile, we have still Illidan in top lane soaking. Cure is finding split pressure. Oh my god, they're going to find a kill into Crow. Unaverted so very low. Does go down to the ETC. But Liam, can he find the counter kill? Madara's joining in. Big Sam Blast. That's a temporal loop onto the ETC. And he is cooked. The cow's up for dinner. He has been taken out, and now with Deathwing on the far right, even though he's getting low on HP, KCB is not going to be able to clean him off. Hyde wants to help, but he's just a lonely Toronto that has no gap closers, has to retreat away fully, and the United States have six kills to three. Meanwhile, this entire time, Illidan was pushing the top lane, so Lockdown had to go up there and defend him, because an Illidan on your fort is usually not a problem you want to deal with. We're at five minutes and 28 seconds, and instead of getting the objective, United States say, it's time for a boss for us. Yeah, they have the 10 advantage. They just got multiple kills. I'm Why so, not? Is that dark conversion at level 10 for Melganis? Okay. All right. No carry and swarm. Going to be swapping health. Got to be Carrie. careful. Uh-oh. The Enduro. Oh, the stage, stage dive. dive into Night Rush. Will connect onto one. There's going to be a bot back from ETC. The contestant point is still up and available. Liam, does he have a bellowing roar up and available? Yes, he does. And he pushes everyone off. The boss will go over to the side hunt. of United States. But the hunt comes in, Trick. And he goes straight on top of high. They take them out. And Liam's looking for more. He dives into that back line with his dragon being able to roar straight on in. Illidan going forward. And now he's in the middle of three. Pops out evasion. Gets the auto attacks. Kiri getting knocked up as well. Crow trying to retreat. But he's going to run to the left side. KCB gets a hook to try and buy him some time, but I don't think it'll be enough. Crow down at 50 HP and finally gets deleted, and the United States has three more kills to their numbers. Nine to three here. A giant camp pushing in the top lane, a boss pushing in the bottom lane. The United States are playing textbook perfectly so far in terms of macro. Such a great call for just chasing down this fight. Split pressures in the lane. I was thinking, do they consider the top lane boss? Maybe they wait for Bellowing Roar. It's up in 10 seconds. I feel like that was the key critical factor in getting that boss back over the United States. Otherwise, I do think South Korea could have gotten that away. First structure to fall will be in favor of USA. South Korea, though, do get their heroics and are all set up. Gorge is a choice, looking for that isolation. So it is that mighty gust into Gorge. Mm -hmm. 
uh, setup that we were discussing earlier and Stage Dive and a Starfall. So they do have the peeling tools, but that was a devastating start for them. But here is the good news for South Korea. There's only one tribute picked up by the United States, so they can set themselves up for a curse in the future. Meanwhile, though, in the Add top right, ETC just completely isolated. That was Hunt, Temporal Loop being popped. KCB trying to retrieve the Malfurion, but he's just a stitches. He doesn't do that much damage. Gets deleted once again. The United States are just running over the Koreans. And now you go for boss for sure. Absolutely. You don't need the bellowing roar. I don't think False Dead Tyrande or Cassie are going to look for any sort of interrupt. Destroyed. All right, Lockdown and Friends will get one tribute of three of their own. 13 talent here to the United States. And man, oh man, this is looking better and better every moment for United States to win this map. But of course, Korea's not out. Yeah, I'm really curious how South Korea is right now. I would I would love to have like a, an idea of if they're all looking a little bit deflated. Because it looks like in terms of gameplay, the comms have just stopped, right? Uh, I know there was like isolation that was on top right underneath the fort, and that's kind of hard to deal with. Uh, but we're starting to see some people peeling off and trying to make their own plays. False yeah. out in the bottom lane. Uh, the wave clear starting to be more of an issue. Temporal loop into a hunt pulls him back underneath the tower, and ETC gets deleted. Okay, that was just pure good play. That, that was, was that was just yeah. That was great. But I agree. There's there, there is that kind of feeling or that look of of it's Defeat the already, it's, it's the right? storm league play. If I shut up and I just play my character and I do my thing, I can win the game for my team. But that's not the case. You gotta, you gotta communicate, you gotta work together, and this keep is gonna take a ton of damage. Crow, Dark Conversion was used by Malganis, and that's another kill for United States. 13-3 in kills, 13 talent tier advantage. The top lane keep will go down. False set has flown in, Gus. will gust away the enemies. Chromie is threatened. Does she have a timeout? Yes, longest stasis in the game. But the rest of the United States says, we got a boss, let's just go core. We got Cure on core with Illidan. We want the series over, and we wanna go up against Sweden next. Chromie goes down on the left-hand side of our screen. Liam's so very low. Was this the wrong call? I don't think so. Well, Core's going down to 50. Even if they all get wiped here, Boss still massive up. with the Core, and that huge boss is still bumping here, too. False gets locked down, and United States, in the span of 9 minutes and 14 seconds, earn their 3-1 victory over South Korea with an aggressive composition, the temporal loop into a hunt, and it's just enough to run over the game. U.S. will be moving forward and face it off against Sweden, and South Korea is now officially done in the tournament. Did you, see, you said 9.14? Yeah, 9.14. That is officially the fastest map at the land. The previous fastest map was Germany versus Poland, 9 minutes and 46. Yeah, that's Cursed Hollow, man. If you start to make the mistakes and you get snowballed there and you keep having those picks happen, which is what was occurring. One of them, I felt like it was a, maybe a miscommunication and things not really working out for South Korea. But other than that, it was just straight up temporal loop at the hunt being on point. ETC is yeah. not a character that you usually see just get deleted that quickly. And they were so quick to make those calls. And once you find one kill into a second one and you have an Illidan, number of advantages where he thrives. And we saw it pulled off there. God, that was such a well-played series from United States. The first game looked really rocky, but to be honest, I don't think either of these teams really warmed up, and Korea did get an S-tier draft at the start as well. But we talked about this throughout the series. United States does play this meta madness draft style. They've got these ideas, so it is, it is a draft-wise, it's stronger for them. Well played from Korea. They will take, uh, I actually don't know what place they'd take being dropped out at this point. I think maybe fourth, I think? Yeah, we'll get it all figured out, obviously, later yep. on. But all we know for sure is they are currently not going to be playing as they've been knocked out in the U.S. We'll be moving forward. Up next, United States taking on a Sweden. Who will move forward and take on Germany? We'll find out after a quick commercial break. Thanks for watching.